YouTube, it's Brad Phillips. We've got the Twin Otter 1.2. This thing's been re-released with the AR631. Safe Select using the NX8. Super excited. We've got the 2200 3S Gen 2 pack all the way up to the front edge here. This will also support up to 3200 3S. Let's do some back taxi and flight. We have a beautiful sunset. We really wanted to get this tonight. So throttle hold or throwing a cut is off, take off flaps, landing flaps, beautiful. Love the scale. Nav lights, very, very peppy power supply. Excuse me, very peppy power. Oh yeah, loving it. Okay guys, also we wanna just say, watch the build part. Uh, if you wanna see how we set up our throttle hold, we had a little bit of trouble getting the ESCs to initiate on this one because I didn't wanna set my throttle Cut to minus 130. Anyway, just watch, have a good laugh on our account. Here we go, take off flaps. Beautiful. That's about 40% throttle there with the takeoff flaps. Look at that beautiful sunset, folks. Guys, the Twin Otter is just a joy to fly. I am not in safe. I haven't given it one click of trim. Take off flaps still. Look at that thing, about 40%, 30% throttle. Going inside, you good? Mm-hmm. Okay, out of the takeoff flaps, full throttle. Look at this thing, super capable on 3S. I thought it was really weird because I remembered shooting the moon here, guys. Nice stall turn, beautiful anti-crash beacon. I remember, I thought I remembered flying this thing on 4S, but the manual didn't speak to it at all. Remember, you need speed to fly this plane, guys. Narrow wing cord, super long wings, long skinny wings, very realistic feel. Good job, camera crew, I hope. <laughs> guys, those nav lights are Super critical tonight, full landing flaps. We're doing a nice slow pass if it'll slow down in time. <laughs> oh yeah, nice little grass touch and go. We call that an accidental touch and go. <laughs> okay, out of the flaps. I don't even have trimming on my elevator yet. I feel like just a little bit extra trim would be nice. Boy, you can feel it drop when you get out of the throttle mm -hmm. without flaps. You can tell when I'm out of throttle because it just sinks. Oh, it's awesome, guys. Right on the mains. Really, really beautiful. I am riding the center of gravity toward the very back of the range, which is uh, currently on the range. It's 45 plus or minus five millimeters. We are right at the back of that range. So what that means is it would tend a little bit toward tail heavy if you want it to fly a little bit more um, solid. I feel like it's pretty dang solid right now myself then you could actually put that closer to the 40, which is quite the range, 10 millimeters. Let's go to the bowl here, camera crew. Oh, lightning in the background, yeah, baby. We're gonna go up and get some lightning in this. You good, camera crew? Mm -hmm. Right there, good, thank you. We're gonna slow it down for you people at home that wanna see some lightning. 30% throttle. We have our new Rode mics on today. I'm using a lav mic that was in combination with our previous photo welt mic kits because I find that the road block is a little bit large to just have chilling on my shirt from Into the Am. Thank you, Into the Am, nice shirt. If you guys want to help support us, check the link in the description below. You can buy those. You can buy this plane. Look at those forward-facing white lights. Very, very bright going by. Love the way the tail droops a little bit on this, just like a real one would. Getting into the throttle a little bit. You don't want it to bite you on that turn, and it just about did. A little bit of rudder action to keep the nose pointed where I want. Little bit of rudder is all you need to keep this thing from snapping on you. And a little bit of throttle, about 30% throttle in your turns. You do any less than that, you're probably gonna be picking up pieces. 
This plane definitely needs some speed to fly. Takeoff flaps, it really, really, really likes to fly around, cruising around. Okay, so we're gonna go into some speed here. Really loves to cruise around about 35% throttle with takeoff flaps. It just does anything you want then. But do not forget to give it throttle when you're trying to make a turn. Roll rate's a little bit anemic. Can definitely be changed if you like it to be a little bit more responsive, but I don't know why you would because this is a general aviation plane. Um, I love the way it looks. I love the way it flies. Just because I know you guys are wondering, will it fly upside down? Of course it will. About 15% up pressure on my elevator. No problem, really super easy to fly upside down right over the power pole there. See, we've got that little line. Oh, that is so beautiful, that sunset is. Mm -hmm. Just riding the edge of the power line there. Guys, really, really, really easy flying plane. Love it. Hopefully, hopefully the lighting is good enough because I feel like our back lighting is gonna kill us. What do you think, Emma? It's gonna be a little silhouette-y, but it shows the silhouette is super cool. And not only that, but look at the beautiful lighting. Guys, we may have to get you a bright daylight film. Okay, out of the throttle, full flaps. I wanna show you what happens to this plane when you try that. It falls. You see what I'm talking about now? I have a Smart Gen 2 pack in here. I'm getting my timer going off right now. This is a smaller of the range of packs recommended in the manual. We did double check. The manual seems to be pretty much in agreement with what we had online. Okay, so safe is on. Safe is on. The plane is flying. I'm not looking. It's going straight. A little bit, little bit higher throttle there, 50%. Limited bank angles are pretty wide on this plane. Let's go up where they can see a little better here. Limited bank angle left, limited bank angle right, limited up, limited down. Nice, very easy to fly. Allows you to coordinate your turns just fine. I'm gonna get out of safe here. We are on borrowed time right now. Take off flaps, this is gonna look super real. I don't like my approach starting from this side, but we'll do it anyway. About 40% throttle there. Boy, that dark sky makes it challenging to see. Good thing the LEDs are so awesome on this plane. 15% mm -hmm. throttle just to keep it from stalling in my turns. A little bit of flare. Oh, yes. Loving it, guys. A little bit of wiggle just to slow it down quicker. And very good ground handling on this plane. Look at that tight turning radius. I cannot resist. Can't resist. Taking it back up for a couple more passes here for the camera crew. Full landing flaps here. Let's see if we can do an uphill landing here. As you can see, grass ops are definitely within the realm of possibility, provided you have a smooth enough grass op to work from. Okay, we'll try this here, full throttle. And there she goes, bounces off just fine. Did you hear the did you hear the animals? The peacocks are doing <laughs> fireworks next door. Nothing like a couple of peacocks blowing things up. <laughs> Guys, I love flying this plane. It's super, it's super smooth. It's super, I, I don't want to say easy because it's not the easiest plane to fly, but it's also not hard. And it's funny because I remember reviewing it and we reviewed it in a terrible weather. It was like cold and extremely windy. And uh, I just felt like we never really did it justice and I never did a second thoughts on it, did I? Really? I don't think so. Wow. I think what happened is we reviewed this and it was right about the time we moved maybe. It might've been an October or November thing, mm. like a birthday for me sort of thing. Hmm. Just love the way it flies though, guys. You definitely have to coordinate your turns, but like that was an, that was an opposite coordination. So when I, when I say coordinate, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you use your rudder to help keep the nose pointed the direction you wanna go. So really, that's what you're doing. But in reality, what you're doing is in a real big plane, you'd be giving, you'd be giving throttle, or you'd change the mix on the fuel ratio, and then you would be controlling your yaw with your pedals, and then you would basically bank the plane and then use your elevator to 
change the amount of turn you want to make by pulling back like this, right? So that's more, that's less, okay? Then your yaw would just be there to kind of just more or less kind of keep your nose pointed where you want to go. And a lot of times uh, pilots will slip. So I'll show you a slip here. Okay, so a slip would look something like this where you kind of, you kind of like slide through the air and you drag the tail. Now you wouldn't typically do that um, with a bunch of throttle because you'd be trying to slow the plane down, but this plane slows down so dang good. You don't really need to slip. Okay, so full landing flaps, what you need is throttle, okay? I just love the way it lands though, guys. It's just super, super good. And yes, of course you can do things like that if you want, definitely not unlimited vertical, but it's just super controllable. When it does stall, it's predictable. It's not hard to get out of a stall, but you do have to be on it a little bit, meaning you have to have a little bit of power left too. Full landing flaps coming in and then we'll flare right at the last second. You can really drag those things out. I do notice that my nose gear is a little bit out of alignment from the rudder, so I'm kind of having to ride the rudder as I bring the nose gear down. So let's go ahead and see if we can roll and keep on the mains for a little bit. You see how the, the nose wheel was lifted before I actually rolled? So cool. This is really pushing the envelope for you guys. I think we're gonna about double our timer now. Okay, full landing flaps there. Thing is really peppy. I've been super nice to the throttle management on this flight. Okay. I really want to get some shots of the uh, lightning in the background. That'd be so cool. It keeps switching sides every time you go. Really? Yeah. So here's another trick, guys. If you have a pack, whether it's a smart pack or a non-smart pack, by now, I can pretty much guarantee a non-smart pack would have been freaking out. One cell would have sagged by now, but the smart packs are always balancing themselves, so you get, you get away with murder with them, okay? See, grass ops for you there, no problem. Let's do a takeoff here right off the end of the runway. And then just roll right at the last second. Kind of had to force it there. I would have liked a little bit more airspeed. Okay, let's do a no flap landing here. Nice. You got the wheels down right at the very last second and look how far it rolls. Goodness gracious. Having a janky uh, rudder to help keep it from overshooting. Let's do a takeoff flaps. Nice scale. Scale takeoff here. Then into the throttle. Here's the trick of the day, guys. If you're trying to figure out if your battery's low, give it a really fast burst of full throttle and see what happens. And if it's dying or almost dead, it won't go. Now, if you have enough altitude to get you back to where you need to be, then you can run the throttle longer. So here we go. 50% oh, throttle there. And I can't help but feel like there was a mosquito that bit my arm right when I was trying that beautiful takeoff there that looked terrible. I'm blaming the mosquito. I am blaming the sucker. Guys, this plane just looks really, really good. I am pushing the envelope for all of you at home. I want you to see how beautiful the lights work on this thing. But mostly I just kind of want to keep flying and I want to get some lightning in our pictures. So I'm at 60% throttle. I would say that I'm probably about to lose power. So I'm going to go ahead and reserve it by gliding or low throttle, full flaps and flare. Guys, this thing just really, really performs well. Okay, so let's jank it around here and then back taxi it to us. Do you have the XPC in your pocket mm -hmm, there, camera I do. crew? Now, I don't know if you guys are picking up what I'm laying down, but those LEDs are pivotal. They're great. But look at how much the trim is on that steerable nose wheel. I am only eight minutes right now past our six. <laughs> so that was as per typical. Throttle holds on and tested. Okay. Now that we're not necessarily up against the wire, I'm gonna go back here. I apologize if my mic was hitting. It's right here and my lanyard is here. I use a lanyard when I fly. 
I would recommend you do the same, but I guess it's kind of a personal preference. Camera crew, you mind holding that? Mm -hmm. And I'll trade you for the XBC. You can see the battery hasn't shifted too bad. I could have probably pulled that up just a hair, but I like the way it felt. Uh, it felt really good. This is supposed to support up to 3,200. Um, I think it would fit in there just fine. There's actually a hole back there, but some of my wires kind of work their way down. So you should be able to get quite a huge pack in there, I'd say. Now this did have an, an EC3 instead of an IC3 because this doesn't have the Avian ESCs and it's got two of them. So just keep that in mind, goodness gracious. Do you want me? I'm just gonna try to pull it myself. It's really, sometimes it can be quite difficult to actually get these things disconnected. And the big thing is don't yank on the wire because you may rip it out of the connector, okay? So if in doubt, reach down and really get a hold of it, okay? So now the XBC, we'll plug that in. Guys, we hope the lighting is great on this video, but if it's not, we're gonna do a, another one for you. 24% left? Wow. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. That's awesome. So one Gen 2 3S uh, 30C pack is gonna yield us at least a 12 minute flight. I feel like 25% is a very safe margin for, for error. And then obviously as you fly this plane uh, more frequently, you're probably going to push to you know do more tricks, maybe a little bit more aggressive flying. Um, I just couldn't, I couldn't do anything but general aviation tonight because look how beautiful everything is. Mm -hmm. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Almost dark. Yeah, it is basically dark. It's a lot dark. darker than it'll look on the video. Yeah, you guys are going to think, yeah, it's not that dark, Brian. It is dark. Our bug zappers are running. So without further ado, guys, if you like this Twin Otter, and I really do. I bought this for myself um, two years ago and loved it then. This is a re-release from Horizon with a 631, so it's just a new one that we're reviewing for Horizon today. And I really like it, just as much as I remembered. Um, in terms of flight performance, it reminds me a lot of, I would say, the Air Tractor. It flies a lot like the Air Tractor, but mm -hmm. the Air Tractor is way more forgiving on stall tendencies. The wing is about one and a half times bigger, and it's about the same size. The Air Tractor is a 1.5 meter. This is a 1.2 meter. Um, in terms of looks, I love the way that this looks. It is a great rendition. Sorry, I just bumped the mic, folks. Uh, great rendition of a general aviation aircraft. It does come with floats and the fixed gear. The only thing I don't like in terms of looks on this plane is the nose gear. It's kind of ugly if you ask me. I'd like to see that being a little bit bigger and a little bit lower to make up for it. By the way, that bogey is longer and you can machine your own flat spot out a little bit higher and you can put a smaller wheel on there and make it look really, really scale. That being said, the mains work really nice for grass ops. I was surprised by how well it worked because our grass kind of sucks over here. Like I said, we've had some really, really bad weather in terms of heat for the last week or two. And it's been like in the near hundreds for a week and we had like one little teeny tiny shower that lasted for about 20 minutes. And it just wasn't enough to really do much of anything. In fact, we've been watering our lawn, which is embarrassing because we're in the country. You don't water your lawn um, unless you tear it up and never actually get it to take, which we didn't. So guys, stick around. We are either gonna have another flight that's preceding this or after this, one way or the other. We hope you'll stick around for the build video, the unbox build and radio setup. Um, one quick thing, the throttle hold on this in the manual calls for minus 130. One of the reasons it calls for minus 130 is to get the throttle range appropriate to arm the ESCs. You can also set your trim way down, get the same impact, throttle hold, uh, throttle cut will need to be set to the same range. And then if you make a big change like that with trim, then I would recommend that you go in and rebind with the trims as such so that your fail safe is not 4% or 5% or 6% of throttle when and if you get into a situation where you lose radio contact. I don't know why that would happen, but evidently it happens periodically to people. Safe works really good on this. This plane on the other hand might not be a good first plane. It would be a great second or third plane, no problem. Uh, definitely good for, for tight areas because as you can see, you can go very slow. You can fly it low, no problems. Um, in terms of sneaking up on you with stalls, yes, that will happen. If you get this plane and you intend to fly it low and slow and you're not skilled enough, you're gonna crash it. 
The good news is it's very strong. It's gonna break if you crash it, okay? This is not an Aero Scout, okay? But you'll notice that it is shaped a lot like an Aero Scout, except that the Aero Scout is a pusher and not a tractor and not a twin. I mean, there's some, some similarities. Um, I love the way this plane looks. I love the way it flies. Definitely worth having in your hangar if you don't already have one. If you do already have one and you're thinking about replacing it because you beat the crap out of your first one, this would be a good time to do it because Father's Day weekend, if hopefully it's not already passed, there's like a 10% off coupon that went out in the emails. By the way, you can still follow my links and use your coupon. That's totally fine. The coupon codes get added at checkout. So you can follow our links, navigate to this plane, set it up, just clearing our timer guys and you can buy from our links in that way and then still use coupon codes that's one of the best parts about helping support us in that way is that you pay no extra and yet we get some credit uh, on the back end when you do make a purchase based on following uh, or viewing one of our videos and we encourage you to buy so that being said guys we really appreciate you being here part of this uh, entire rc experience we love bringing these things to you we love doing this together. It's really cool, Megan and I, my wife, Megan, the camera crew, uh, she helps film and she's very good at following planes in the air, which is just a totally off the wall thing that we didn't understand was gonna be a thing until we started doing it here about six years ago. And we have loved every single minute of it. Every single. Every single minute, oh. especially the Dyna builds are our mm -hmm. favorites. They're only like five or six hours long. Um, this one, on the other hand, was much shorter and much less painful. So you may enjoy watching that. If you stick around, it should precede this right away, or there's gonna be another flight in the daylight so you can see what this looks like. But boy, I can tell you, in that sunset, I don't know if we're gonna get a lot better in the daylight. That's pretty cool. Guys, do us a favor. If you haven't already clicked the like, uh, the thumbs up, give us a thumbs up. It really does help us in support of the uh, YouTube algorithm. It helps to get us out in front of people that haven't found the channel yet, and then helps them to then find the channel and become part of this group. We also really appreciate you. We just had 100,000 subscribers here recently. We got our silver uh, plaque from YouTube, so we thank you for that again. We're gonna keep thanking you uh, into perpetuity, I think. But uh, hopefully the next time we'll be doing it, it'll be the gold award and then the platinum award and things like this. This is this what happens when these YouTube channels grow and you're really helping us to uh, be able to live our dreams here and we appreciate that. That being said, the best way you can help us is to buy from the links. If you're buying anyway, you're not gonna be spending any extra. And we have links to just generically to Horizon Hobby. If you're in Europe or some other country like Canada and you can't, I think uh, Horizon is shipping to Canada now. Uh, if you can't buy from Horizon, then you can buy from the Tower Hobby links. We have them there too. But just go into the tower and then navigate to where you want using the search results on that website. And you'll be supporting us in that way. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We've got our new mics to annoy you more effectively with that <laughs> intro. So these are the road mics. We've been using them for now two videos. The first of which was the thank you video. Thank you again. We have the NX-8 here. We're flying on a 3200 3S in the beautiful twin otter that we have added an extra hole to. You'll have to wait and see what that's for. <laughs> I have this 3200 all the way back. We flew last night in a beautiful, gorgeous sunset. You may or may not have seen that yet. If you haven't seen it, it's coming up um, either immediately after this or after the build. So you just have to look around for it. We never know which flight's gonna be better. So we kind of put it out there like that. We adjusted our trim for the nose wheel. I let the cat out of the bag. Hopefully the audio quality is good. We have a little bit of wind, but it's not anything too crazy. Take off flaps there, throttle holds off, throttle cuts off. Oh yeah, we got a little better trim there. This thing has great ground handling, folks. I just love the way it ground handles, love the way those props look. So now without further ado, we've got our takeoff flaps dialed in. And what we're gonna do is we have a bit of a crosswind going on today. So we're gonna go down to the end of the runway and we're just gonna take off and throw caution to the wind, pun intended. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, way, way more manageable. 3200 is nice and heavy compared to the 2200. Remember, this plane needs throttle to fly because you'll notice that when I chopped the throttle there, she wanted to fall. It is very easy to control the sink rate with throttle on this plane, which makes for really, really nice landings. It looks super real. We are at the back 
center of gravity point, I would call it. The 3200 in the position that it's installed is super, super good for getting that center gravity back if you wanna have nice uh, flare on landing. You can push it all the way forward and you can have a little bit more stable platform with a little bit more nose heavy behavior. That's full throttle on 3S. This thing is not a powerhouse on 3S, but I love the way it looks because it's a nice scale flying platform because they do a lot of rolls like that in real life. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do a little stall turn there. As you can see, it didn't want to even do it because it's just, the wind was probably fighting us a bit. You have to coordinate your turns if you want this plane to look good. Keep in the throttle. Takeoff flaps are your friend. I just turned them on. When I'm cruising around with this plane, like around here, for instance, the takeoff flaps come into play big time. Gosh, I swear I'm thermaling over that hill there. Love the way the sun is casting shadows on it today. We have the whole extremes in this video because we filmed in the beautiful sunset. You may have already seen it, you may not. If you haven't, stick around for it. It's gonna be gorgeous. Really absolutely gorgeous sunset. Hopefully you can see the uh, lightning that we were watching as it was being filmed. Like I said, it's got plenty of power to do what you wanna do. Full speed pass there. It's not a fast plane, but I love the way it looks. It's a general aviation plane, guys. It's not a warbird. Near the vampire killing zone, we'll bring this down. Love when the sun is high like this because then you can really cast a shadow and tell where you are spatially. So as you can see, there's a shadow on the ground. Camera crew, are you able to see that? Let's go into the bowl and show them what I'm talking about. Takeoff flaps deployed here, about 30% throttle, 40% throttle. You do have to have a lot better throttle management when you're on a 3200 3S because of the weight. Be aware of it. Okay, you guys see the shadow on the trees as they go by? See the shadow on the ground as I go by? Mm -hmm. See the shadow on the ground over the septic tank there? Mm -hmm. That is what I use as a gauge for where I am spatially. A lot of rudder to keep that nose pointed down. You can tell from the steerable nose gear if you look close. A lot of rudder to get engaged in that turn. Try not to change the throttle position so it looks nice and cool and real. But you gotta still make your turn, guys. Sometimes when you're flying around in tight environments like this, your tendency is, ah, oh, I want it to look good. But then you're like, wait, hold on. You gotta make it so that it survives too. See how close I am to the tree line? Not that close. It might look that way on camera, but it's not. Don't be afraid to give it a little extra throttle on a tight turn like that. You will need it or it'll fall. And I am still in the takeoff flaps. Let's show landing flaps here. You gotta get about 60% throttle just to kind of keep it flying. And you have to coordinate your turns even more with the more throttle. But look how awesome that looks, guys. Beautiful. Out of the, th out of the flaps altogether. I think it could probably use a click of trim. It still does upside down flight performance just fine. Absolutely no problem. Enough power to not quite execute an inside loop. More of a flop over. Guys, love the way this plane flies. It looks gorgeous, it acts gorgeous. Definitely not the easiest flying general aviation plane that Horizon Hobby offers. If you guys are wanting something that's easier to fly, there's a million choices. This thing is just incrementally harder to fly than the others because it just has that narrow, long, beautiful, gorgeous, scale-looking wing takeoff flaps here. And to be honest, if you're wanting to fly this with safe, I'm gonna show you that now. We've been out of safe the whole time. Okay, here's safe. Just remember, you've got good limited bank angles. That's a little rudder to keep it going level. Almost all rudder. <laughs> the limited bank angles will definitely keep you on your toes if you have obstructions, because look at the elevator all the way up elevator all the way down. Really good limited bank angles. That means that you can still fly this thing like you stole it. If you stole it, you should give it back. That's not nice. Still in safe, folks. Out of the takeoff flaps. I was in my takeoff flaps, folks. Kind of forgot about that, actually. 
really riding the elevator to get that altitude up so I can come over the top of these power lines. Once we get over the power lines, we'll come out of safe. Okay, out of safe now. Just really, really, really enjoy flying this plane. A little higher speed behavior. We're coming up to our six minute timer just now. Three, two, one. I wonder if the annoying um, English lady will show up on the audio today. Little stall turn there for you. You notice I had to get on the throttle hard there. Let's go over the vampire killing zone. Take off flaps, look at the shadow on the trees. Beautiful, beautiful, nice. Yeah, baby. A Little bit of janking around just to slow it down. This thing does not like to tip over for being a tricycle. It behaves exceptionally on the ground. Wind is at our nose now. We landed with the wind, it's a little bit weird. Take off flaps here. Beautiful. We're gonna go all the way down the runway back and double back around so we can do a takeoff and landing, excuse me rather. Full throttle there. Camera crew, I'm gonna step in front of you if you don't mind. Okay. We're gonna go up over the power line, show you how steep you can land this thing. Take off flaps, about 50% throttle, 40%, 30%. Control your rate of descent with the throttle, about 20%, 10%. Flare, and down she goes. In the grass, she does fine. I'm gonna turn around here. Very good prop clearance for being a, a you know, a tricycle, she never tips over, which is really nice. You would think, okay, so let's just show you, I'm with the wind right now, so I wanna double back around just to show you how easy it is to get it off the ground. Very robust landing gear. You can see it's not, not very smooth here. Okay, full throttle on a dead battery, essentially. Camera crew, if you go to the center for me, that'd be really helpful, because then I can, there you go. Now I don't have to cross in front of you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, coming in under the power lines, we'll try take off, excuse me, a landing here. Gosh, I can't even get my terminology right. Boy, this is flying super good for the wind. Okay, full landing flaps and flare. Okay, we're just gonna make that a touch and go. You guys see how that, the attitude of the aircraft gets weird when you put full takeoff, or excuse me, landing flaps It'll point the nose down so you can actually drag the nose gear on the ground if you want. But I kind of need to land it or I'm gonna run out of juice. A Little bit of overshoot, it's kind of embarrassing. Take off flaps only this time. We're gonna take off with the wind here on a nearly dead battery. Ow, oh, ah, got me. <laughs> okay, full landing flaps here. And there it is. Whoa, that wind came up out of nowhere. That was crazy. Uh, okay, well, I was hoping to have a better landing. So we flew a pretty good long flight on our evening flight. I feel like with the heat, we're probably gonna be pushing it to go a whole lot longer. We're three minutes, 19 past our six, but we're gonna do it just for you because we care about you on YouTube. Look at that beautiful roll. That's only about a 40 foot um, overall runway from that point where we took off, including the skirt that was under us at the end. Ah, oh, ah, got me again. Full landing flaps. Woo! Let's just do a slow pass. Take off flaps there. That crosswind is just killing me. It's coming around the house, I think. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Hey, let's go over here past the Eagle Killing Zone right there, and let's take it through this hole. It's always nice to try different holes. Mm. Full landing flaps, you know, I mean, it just depends. If you have cooperation, it's always fun. Nah, it didn't quite make the angle. These guys are wondering when my battery's gonna die and then disaster ensues. So am I. I know you are. Take off flaps, 50% throttle. Just doing the good old battery test, giving it full throttle. Okay, full landing flaps. 
and beautiful flare, very good ground handling, and we stopped technically on the runway. <laughs> I'm gonna put that one down as a victory. Look at those beautiful props. Love the lines, guys. Out of the flaps now, watching for that two second delay. Just absolutely gorgeous. Let's taxi it all the way up to the front because this thing taxis so dang good. It rolls really, really well. It almost needs a little bit more resistance on the wheels. Love the way this plane flies though. It's got plenty of power for with the floats. I think it would fly even more scale. It'd probably calm it down a little bit and uh, just stabilize it some. Not that it's unstable. It's kind of hard to explain that to people that maybe haven't flown much. Look how tight this thing turns. Look at this. Oh no, everybody died. Okay, throttle holds on. Maybe Let's check the pilot. There was lots of shooting that happened. They spilled their drinks. They did spill their drinks. Better didn't shift or anything, oh, so that's good. Good. Well, um, do you have the XBC 100? I did not grab it before we came out. You know what we'll do? We're gonna go inside and we will wrap this up and show you exactly what the voltage we left this at. I just wanna implore you that this plane is super well put together, very easy build. The NX8 has been really good. We've been so far really happy with the road mics. I know that you guys are only seeing now for your second video. Um, so far we've done lots of testing. We've been trying to really correct the audio issues we've been dealing with, and we feel like maybe we've got a good fit here. Um, they are a little bit new for us. We're gonna be making some experiments uh, with our videos, so please work with us on this, guys. We know that the audio quality was suffering pretty bad there. Um, so now that we've got these in place, we've made the investment, we're kind of learning how to work with them. We've been very happy. We think you will be too. Hopefully you can hear the camera crew's snide remarks. Mm -hmm because she makes lots of them. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, we've been married for a long time. We almost have an anniversary coming up. Hey, good. That's right. You remembered. That's right. But do you know how long? It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's been a long time. Because every it's, day it's on. It's joy. on my ring and in my heart. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go inside and check the battery. Okay. <laughs> okay, so just so there's no funny business going on here, which would be kind of nice if you know, not. Okay, stop it. Ow. See this? XBC. By the way, if you guys don't have this tool, it is one of the most economical battery tools that you can get. You can also use this as a servo tester and they are awesome. Mm -hmm. So the only issue you're gonna see when we're filming is that sometimes the exposure makes it kind of hard to get good display, but in person, we never have problems. Nope. And I think the other day, I slipped up when I was explaining something to where it wouldn't show up on camera outside, but it shows up just fine in real life. And we picked this orange and black um, layout. You can actually change those colors. They can be white and blue and red, white and blue and all sorts of different things. You can also make custom colors, which is pretty cool. Um, we've never had a problem seeing it ever. Mm -mm. Bright sun, darkness, uh, intense sun, <laughs> but it does sometimes give us problems with respect to the exposure on the camera when it's extremely bright outside compared to the standard brightness here. We can see it with the human eye, but sometimes it doesn't pick up well on camera. So just wanted to point that out. Um, if there's any issues with the NX8, that's not it. No. The issues we've had with the NX8 have been pretty much like just annoying glitches, like noises when you exit the naming section. Um, we had some issues getting the firmware to update and it said, uh, waiting or something, but I, I don't care. Like so far it's not been an issue, so I don't care. Um, I think it might've been a Wi-Fi issue too because we had just upgraded to Starlink at the time. Uh, other than that, there's just a couple of little glitches that we ran into one time. Uh, there was a jam when we were exiting menu structure, but it's not like you would have been in that menu structure while flying because we had our RF off. And then we just rebooted it and it worked fine. So, so far so good. I've been very, very happy with it. And by the way, I came from a DX18, which was the top of the line card. Well, it was the next at the top of the line card. Um, at the time there might've been a DX18 QQ, which was a little bit more expensive and it was like all black. And then oh, there was really? a, there was, a, I can't remember if there was a 20. There was an IX20, but I don't think there was a DX20. Maybe there was a DX20. Either way, it doesn't matter. You wanna know how many times I used anything more than 10 channels? Once. Never over 10. Oh, I, never used, over 10 yeah. I used 10 once. I used nine a couple of times, but only because I had nine channel receivers like bomb drop function. So as you can see here, 
3.8, 40% left. That's pretty good. You got a glare there, camera crew. That is pretty good. So I think you flew for... Um, I flew for about five on this one plus our timer, which was six. So yeah, I, was I would say 11 or 12 minutes. Yeah. Ironically, we actually got a longer flight out of our 2200 milliamp. Now, there is a reason for that. I flew this harder today. It was hotter today. Lipos respond to temperature. If it's too hot, they respond and they work kind of poorly. If it's too cold, they respond and they work poorly. If it's just right there in the super comfortable, um, you know, perfect flying weather, they do really good. And by hot, we mean like it's in the low 90s today. So yeah, it's, it's hot. hot. Yeah, it's hot and humid. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, the wind uh, didn't seem to have a, a major adverse effect on this plane. I really, really like the way it is here. I'll show you what I was talking about earlier at the beginning, um, how this thing tips back a little bit. I'm not a big fan of the way that looks, but if you're careful the way you manage your cables and stuff like that, you can get it. You can get it to stay if you're really careful, or you can just put some small amount of ballast in there when you're storing it. Like you could do as little as probably like one screwdriver from a crappy, you know, dynam plane or something. <laughs> so, sorry, it's like our punching bag on this channel. We, you know, it's funny because I actually really do like Dynam. I just don't like them near as much as Horizon. I just don't like building them. I don't like building them. If we didn't have to film it, it would be okay. Because like, I could be listening to music and like, you know, consuming lots of depressants in the liquid form. <laughs> <laughs> that that would make it so it. much less depressing in real life. Um, but, but the reality is um, this plane is great. The Twin Otter is awesome. My complaints are very minor. I don't like the size of this wheel. It's kind of ugly, but it works really good in the grass. Um, also, this wheel does help with yaw authority, which is kind of nice. It has a small rudder, but it works nice. Uh, does not induce hardly any roll, which is really cool on a scale plane. Um, I love being able to do flat maneuvering. I didn't set up a mix on ailerons to rudder, but honestly, on this plane, if there was a plane to do it on, this would be one. If you're not very skilled as a pilot, if you're new, that would make a big difference in the way it looks when it flies. You're like, but Brian, how could that possibly make it look better? Because it's gonna look more real. When you see somebody flying and they never use a rudder, the planes look like crap. You have to use rudder, you have to coordinate your turns or it's gonna look stupid because planes use a rudder in real life. Um, so what I mean is, here's a trick. So when you're using aileron to move, just get in the habit of moving both sticks, okay? Move both sticks. Elevator, little coordinated turn. And then of course, you know, if you're in throttle, you have to try to maintain that position. One of the cool things on this transmitter that we never talk about is there's actually a retention setting in these different um, holes, like under here. Whoops, that's actually the end stop. Um, but they're right there and right there. It's in the manual. That's one of those things you want to look in the manual and you tighten them and it has like a click, 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 or you can make it super smooth where there's no clicks and you can make it so that this thing is very sticky. Like you let go and that thing holds still. That will help if you have problems with when you're yawing the airplane, if you ch tend to change your throttle position while you're yawing the aircraft. And that comes with muscle memory and it's not just on your thumbs. It's on your forehand. Actually, it's this the strength of your fingers here, you'll build and maintain that strength. And then you'll be better at making those finite adjustments on your rudder. And of course, it's just a practice thing. So anyway, uh, lots of different morsels of excitement in this video. But if you haven't already bought this, definitely check the links in the description below. If you stay tuned for just a few minutes, we'll probably go ahead and show you how to correct the uh, disparity between your steerable nose gear and your rudder if you wanna fix that. There's an easy way to do it and we made this nice accessible hole so we can get in there with a screwdriver and we'll show you that coming up right away. And stay tuned for our night flight. It was really good. I think you might actually enjoy it. I'm not sure if that's gonna go at the very beginning or if it's gonna come after this, but either way, uh, if not, next up is gonna be the build, the unbox build radio setup and we'll go through all the radio settings. We actually didn't deviate any of the radio settings. I think I might've clicked I have minus four on the elevator, and then on throttle, we actually went through that, and we'll talk about that in the unbox build radio setup right at the end. We'll talk about the woes we had with the throttle and having the prop start up. But you can learn from our mistakes. I don't even know if I would call it a mistake. It's just kind of a weird, it's a weird 
quirk with this model. And I think I remember having the same quirk when we did it last time. Hmm. So either way, no big deal. Just do what we didn't and you'll have no problem. Come back for more. All right guys, so we didn't show this because we were up against darkness last night. We kind of ran out of time or I would have showed it. Um, we noticed in our True Maiden that this thing has a tendency to favor to the, um, to the right as it's taxiing as compared to flying straight in the air. So there's a couple of different ways you can resolve this. And the easiest way is probably gonna be to just adjust the linkage that does the steering control. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. It is a bit of a pain because as you can see from underneath here, throttle cuts on untested by the way, you can't get to the controls here. Now you could make a bit of a bend on your floats if you wanted and then adjust it that way. But in my case, as you can see here, there is a machined point where all this stuff goes together. That's also what keeps this, okay? So I'm just noticing that's not super tight either. So I'm gonna tighten that real quick. Okay, so as that's tight, you can tell there's not really any way because the way that that flat is machined, you basically have to get inside the plane and make the adjustment. So I'm gonna show you where to do that real quick. Um, again, a lot of this stuff is not really rocket science. We're also using the 3200 3S on this plane. Um, we used the 2200 3S last night. It worked really nicely. But I noticed that with uh, 3200, you can push it all the way back, which is really nice, all the way back. And you still get way, way light on the nose wheel, which is super nice. So, like if you go to roll, you can get that nose wheel off the ground almost instantly, which is nice for grass ops. Okay, so this kind of has to roll up a little bit, but you see my problem. The problem is that these things are in here. So you have to remember to take those out. So if you don't remember to do it, it's not like the end of the world, but it's not great either. They do snap up and then they pull straight out. Okay. They're not as bad as you might think when you first snap them in. So pop it up and then pull straight out. They're really easy to put back in though. Um, it's just not maybe super ideal to have to do that. Okay, so now obviously you can't get into anything there because that just lines up with the hole that receives your nuts. Okay, so now that we have this up, you can see, you see them in there, camera crew, mm -hmm. where the controls are, okay? So the easiest thing to do is like for this, if you step back like three steps, no, toward the cat food, there you go. Toward the cat food, it's like over there. Okay, go back over further. You see how it's favoring to the left? Get yourself in a spot where you can tell what direction it's going. And if you have a helper, it's like really easy. But you can see mine is really favoring quite a bit. So I'm gonna have to use a lot of rudder correction when I'm going to fly. And then when I lift, I have to uncorrect. And it's actually kind of challenging to do that. Um, definitely can do it, but it's not easy and it's not fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Phillips screwdriver and I'm gonna loosen this one adjustment point here right here, this one adjustment here, you just loosen that one adjustment so that it's loose, not so that it's undone totally. You don't wanna to undo it totally. And then I want this to balance so it can sit down in there. And then you see how bad it is now? That's cause it's slipped. So I'm gonna just put it until it feels like it's about right. See how it slips? It's very easy. Once you get it to roll back and forth in a short path, I'm just holding on to this, this plastic nut that sticks out of the side that's like the keeper for the wheel, the tire. Mm -hmm. And I'm using that to change the angle. So I'm overshooting where I wanna go and then I'm just undershooting a little bit and I'm just going back and forth by feel until it seems about right. So now I feel like that's about right so I'm gonna tighten this and then we'll check it. See, it's just a nasty angle, in fact, I'm a little bit tempted to just make an access because I have a feeling we're going to need to adjust this again and I do not want to have to take this wing off every time. Yeah, that's really tempting to just make an access. I'm going to make an access right now. Okay, so I'm holding my finger here. Oh man, you can almost see where, where you need to go from up front. Yeah, I'm almost there. 
If I could have got that hole exactly where I wanted, it would have been slightly better. So I'm stabbing my plane for you guys on YouTube. Just be careful, you don't want to hit the spar. And I think that's what's going on is there's a spar right there. That's gonna prevent me from reaching. Man, that would be so nice if I could get that though. I was really, really close to my target. You see what's going on is when I try to put the screwdriver in there, the screwdriver has to pass along this channel of foam here. So I'm gonna take and put this into where I want it to go and I'm gonna force it into the wall of the foam like this. You see what I did there? I just took and put it into the screw head and then I just walk this over. See, I'm making a channel so that it guides the screw, screwdriver down in. So now when I replace all this equipment, Got to kind of push all your wires back where they belong. So now when, when I replace all this, I feel like I'm hitting something now. Yeah, you got to push those wires down like what we did in the build. Okay, so now that it's down, my hope is this will guide right into where it needs to be. Yep, you can feel it. And now if you kind of tuck down here, if you've got it up on a counter, then you can sort of almost make the angle. So you're looking from inside. I'm looking to that. from the outside. You can Great. see that control surface, which is really nice. Now you can see that it still moves free right now because we don't have it tightened all the way. But since you have to take off several different components, I want to try to get this so I can adjust it out in the field if possible. I'm so close. Like I can feel I'm hitting it. Mm. So basically, once you get that figured out, then you should be able to make your adjustments. And I can definitely see, yep, I can feel it with the tip of the screwdriver. And I wouldn't say that this is maybe super easy, but it is gonna be super nice to be able to do this. So I'm gonna fight it for a second and then tighten it and show you in just a second here. Okay, so once you find that spot, you see what I've done? I've got it in there and I can turn this and I can tell that it's a bit down so it's not changing. And then I can actually roll the plane and see it go back and forth with some level of straight repeatability. And then all I have to do is just tighten that last little bit, okay? Because it was kind of a weird angle to make with the wing off in general. So hopefully this will give us a little bit of flexibility for future use. Um, I would tell you exactly where to put the hole, except that it's just, it's kind of not exact. <laughs> <laughs> so when you get ready, if you want to try to copy that, I think it's actually a good copy. You guys could copy that. And I just made one extra hole, unfortunately. But it's, uh, it's right, right here. So when you pull that wing off, just kind of eyeball it. And then you can make your one access point. And all you have to do is take the tip of your screwdriver and just ride it in there and you can feel it. And once you hit the right spot, then you twist the screwdriver until you feel purchase and it will tighten, okay? So it's not maybe completely idiot proof, but it's definitely cool. And I like that idea. So I'll actually, for a second, just because I wanna be nice, I'm gonna measure this because you guys are gonna ask, where did you put the hole? From the leading edge, I'm at, um, I'll do this in metric and standard. Oh, geez, of course, it's between three quarters and seven eighths. So that would be uh, in the 16th. Of course, I'd have to count. So it's right there. I'm gonna get the metric out, yeah, it's so much 14 easier. 14 sixteenths, right? <laughs> 14 sixteenths, that's an even number, so that would reduce. Well, so, it's no stuff, 14 okay. sixteenths. It's, excuse me, that might be 30 seconds. So we'll just measure it, and I think I can switch units and measure with this. Oh, okay. So then we can just tell people exactly where we put it. Now, I'm not saying that mine's perfectly lined up, it's not. But from this bulkhead, we're at, uh, let's just call it, let's call it 71 millimeters would be probably safe, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. 
I mean, it's going to be hard to replicate it any closer than 71 millimeters. And then there is a molding line here where there's a contour where the wing box comes in. So I would say from the edge of the wing box, and I'm just feeling it with my finger. You guys aren't going to be able to see it on camera very well, but you'll be able to tell. It looks like we're, let's call it 12 millimeters. So 71 by 12 millimeters. So 71 back from the leading edge, 12 millimeters in uh, from that wing box contour right here, if you're at 90 degrees right here, and then 71 here and 12 here, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you wanna try to replicate that, you may actually find that going over just a hair might be helpful, so maybe like 10, because I was in it, you can kind of see I'm in it a bit of an oh, angle. angle. Yeah. So remember, there's a certain amount of thickness to the fuse too. So we just wanted to show you that little tip. Um, in terms of inches, I'll put it in inches and tell you what it is, but it's gonna be a weird number. Um, okay, so inches are two point, well, maybe we could say 2.75 2 is gonna be okay, but you might hit the edge of the spar, okay? So 2.75 inches. And then from the wing box at 90 degrees, meaning right here is flat, and then right here is flat. I'm gonna say center to center is about, um, let's see if we can go to 0. 0.4, yeah, that's way too big. <laughs> 0. 0.44 inches, yeah, that's not gonna do you much good. So yeah, 71 millimeters back, 12 millimeters in, and that'll get you right to the adjustment screw. Now keep in mind, if you have a lot of trim in there, then that trim will undermine your ability to hit that as easy. Um, because obviously you're not gonna be flying it when you're doing this. So I just, I like, I like having access to adjustments like that because I hate having to take wings off like that. So without further ado, hopefully this helped guys. This plane is just full of all sorts of tricks. It's a great flying plane. You've seen it fly. Well, we haven't seen it fly in the heavier wind. We flew our old one in the wind, but we haven't seen this one fly in wind yet. I'm sure it's gonna do just fine, but hopefully the sunny, windy flight and the dark, beautiful sunset flight will be enough to help close the deal on this one. When and if you decide to buy one for yourself, and as you can see, those things snap right back in, no problem at all. What a beauty, this thing is just gorgeous. It is a really well done general aviation aircraft. I love the way it flies. It sets up really easy with the NX-6. We didn't have a lot of problems with, with really anything on this build. Um, it is a little bit tricky to get the wing on, but no big deal. It's definitely doable, especially if you're not filming. And then if you get a little bit of a bend in your back wing like this, I notice that there's a little bit of a bend here. I don't like the looks of it, but the thing is, if you're really serious about it, you can actually just literally bend it back square. So very happy with the plane overall. My only complaint with this plane beyond the bend in the wing, which is just minor and it can be fixed if you choose to go through the, tr the trouble, is that without a battery, it likes to sit tail down. Mm -hmm. I always prefer planes to sit flat on their wheels. And for instance, the F-16 is one of the very few EDF jets that sits on all threes when it is battery free. Now it is very light on its tail. It'll fall back if you push it. But I love when you can display a plane flat. So if you get this plane, you want to display it flat, then you can really sometimes get it to stay, but my trick is like with these uh, Cessna Longitude Citation, Cessna Citation Longitude UMX, uh, which is a mouthful. These things I take and put like a couple of screwdrivers in the front because then that just keeps it from tipping back because we have one up here in our decorative display as well. And it's such a, a beautiful, gorgeous little UMX plane. I love putting it on display. <laughs> But uh, if you want it to sit on its mains, which I mean, actually when you pull the mains out, that one looks like it's taking off. So it's really cool. It looks like it's rolling. Um, but if you're anything like me, you're gonna wanna do that. <laughs> so anyway, all right, without further ado guys, check the link in the video description below. We have links to this. We'll link to the 2200 and 3200 smart packs of various different C ratings. The 30C is plenty good. You don't really need a lot more than that. Um, I honestly don't know if this thing will do on 4S, so I'm not even gonna suggest it. I think it probably would, but I'm not suggesting you try it. I'm suggesting that 3S is plenty of power for this thing. It's not quite unlimited vertical, but it looks great scale. And it gets out of the grass just fine. So if it can get out of grass and it has plenty of ups, 
the way I see it is if you go to 4S, it's just gonna look kind of dumb in my opinion. This is not a fighter jet. I want it to look scale myself. But if you wanna make it look like a fighter jet, two Avian ESCs will be a, a lot of cash, but you can definitely do that. And then you can also get your feedback. Uh, but I'm not sure how that works when you have 20 ESCs. So anyway, without further ado guys, come back for more action. All right, YouTube, we forgot one detail. We just wanted to share this. I always feel like I'm cheating on you when I don't share the full story. Um, I took this label. This was off of a, uh, an address label from just an Avery printout page that had like little return address labels. Mm -hmm. And it just was a piece of white label that I cut some of the margin off. I didn't even waste a whole label because I'm too cheap for that. Um, I took and cut a little circular pattern and I wanna show you what I was gonna to do to dress up this hole. Cause I mean, we all wanna dress up our holes before we stick things in them. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take in, uh, I trimmed it to my liked shape. I wanted it to be kind of rounded edges so it blends nicely. And it's coming off of here really easy. So I'm just gonna trim this just a little bit more. And this is just white paper. So like if it got grass on it or something like that, it would stain, but it's so easy to apply and so easy to probably take off. We're just gonna show you how awesome this works, okay? So you remember I made two holes instead of one and I was really annoyed about that. So I said, you know, I mean, it's not a big deal, but I was a little bit annoyed. This is just one trick you can do, trick of the day. And there you go, you've got, you've got your access now to make your adjustment. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make my nice, perfectly clean looking hole. And you'll never ever know that that wasn't a factory hole now that that's there. Look how nice that works. That's amazing. It is amazing. I mean, I think it's amazing. You're welcome for the address. So thank you. Margin. Yes, that's right. And if, if nothing else in a two and a half hour video, you're going to get at least one <laughs> right. morsel of wonderfulness and that's it. There's your minute and 40 seconds. Min you get. Minute and 40 seconds out of two hours. <laughs> Sounds like a bad date. <laughs> or Come back for more. YouTube into the AM. They make shirts. You should buy some. We have a link below and there's coupon codes. But in the meantime, let's build this plane. What is this anyway, you say? Well, it is an EFL something or another. Pretty sure you already know since you saw the flight already. Uh, this is a re-release of an E-Flight Twin Otter, which is super cool. Comes with floats and the regular fixed gear. Obviously we're, oh yes. Look, look at that beauty. It is beautiful, which is what beauties are. Hey, you may have noticed that you can hear me talking and you can hear the snide remarks from the camera crew. Mm -hmm. Yep. She hasn't made any yet, mostly because I haven't given her an opportunity. It's only been 53 seconds. It's only been 53 seconds. Shoot. Some videos. I'm slacking. Wow, that is pretty. Okay, cool. I love this plane. I've had it. I currently have it in the basement. This is a re-release. It has the new AR631, which is pretty awesome. Yes, it does come with floats. You can see right here. It's got some floats there. It's got the gear here. I see that they come with some blue stripes along the side, which is nice. I don't is know if that's that a decal you have to add. Know? We've never had blue stripes like that on our floats before. I think so. So I'm actually quite excited about that. So this comes with uh, safe select and AS3X obviously. And it's got full functioning flaps, LEDs, beautiful scale details. And if it's anything like the first one that I had, I'm gonna love it. It's a skill level two. This plane does need to be flown a little bit compared to some of the others um, because it's got a narrow wing. So just be aware of that when you're going in to pick this. Counter rotating props, which I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. One of the many, many reasons why E-Flight does such a great job. One's red, one's green. So I'm sure the instruction manual will be totally clear on how to handle that. I noticed that this has a bag around it. That's good. I don't remember if there's a bag on the first one. Okay. Looks really nice. Scale flaps, big ailerons, beautiful details on this. And then there's a piece of paper over this. You know what? I think did they redesign the wing? I honestly can't remember. Mm, man. That wing is pretty long. It's a 1.2 meter plane. And then this comes out and look how the floats are in there. They're pretty, they've got decals mm. on them. That's cool. You don't even have to put the decals on them. Yes, 
It has a steerable water rudder, which is really nice. Um, one drawback on the floats that come with these planes, if you're not gonna be flying the floats, they are kind of big, so you have to store them. And if you have like, say, 200 planes sitting in your basement, it does get a little bit much to have like, you know, 20 pairs of floats. A float shelf. Especially for the big planes like the Carbon C Cub and things like this. Okay, so it comes with a control rod that presumably attaches to the steerable nose gear, and then it just comes back and then attaches to this uh, assembly. So it's nice and simple. It's not even a folding mm -hmm. um, type rudder, but those are good for snow launches too, which is really cool. Ooh, yeah, buddy. Nice and straight. I had a bend on the first one that I had. This seems a little bit different than I remember. Like it just seems nicer. I don't know if they actually changed some of the stuff on this plane. If this is actually, I don't remember that, that plastic there. Hmm. Maybe it was there and I just don't remember because it's been a while since we did this plane. Hmm. Believe it or not, it would have been like one of the first planes we did in this new house. Did just we like even two... do it here? Pretty sure we did it here. Really? Okay. Hey, look, this manual's not folded. That's always nice. I always complain a lot when the manuals are folded because it annoys me a lot. Well, I was going to reuse that Ziploc bag, so I think we should just return this now. <laughs> you all think he was joking, <laughs> but he was not joking. Um, okay, so here it is. Okay, this says, Dear Valued Customer, in order to bring you the best product experience possible, please visit the website. Um, Changes to things like center of gravity transmitter setup and all that jazz. So we'll get to that later. We'll ignore that later. Mm -hmm. Should we start ignoring it now or later? We just leave it over there and pretend. If like you guys want the best it. possible experience, don't ignore it. Just watch this video and learn from my mistakes. That. Oh, I thought that was just garbage. There's something in there. No, there's stuff in there. I just wanted to point that out. There is. Oh. Uh, two little screws in that mm. screw sack, and then there's um. Two very, very small cones. That's disappointing. Well, listen, at least there's two of them. That's true. So that being said, these props are beautiful. They have scale details on there, printed only on the front, it looks like. And these are T7056Cs. And then D, I can't read the other one. See if you can read that camera crew. Which one, this one? I don't know, just look at the inboard portion of the wing. I love the, the lines on the props. I just wish they were marked on the front it's and like, the back. It says, oh, there it is, T7055CR. Sorry, I can't even put it close enough to why. read it so that they can see it. That's not the right one then. Yeah, it is, yeah, it is. So why are they both marked the same? Okay, so CR. let's look at this, guys. One of them is reverse and one of them is standard okay so i want you to take note of that so this one's going to spin this way to pull forward and this one's going to spin this way to pull forward okay so we got those set out ready to rock and roll there's quite a bit of stuff in these bags like little covers and things like this some of the stuff is going to be used for um when you use the floats so you may not need all of these nut sacks and bolt sacks but don't lose any don't lose your nut sack it's uh, one of the first things you need to learn when you're dealing with RC aircraft. Okay, so we've got, whoa, is that everything? That's everything, guys. Yeah. That's a pretty quick unbox. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna take that out of the plastic here in a second. I just wanna get this stuff out of the way. Um, yeah, that was pretty uneventful. Mm -hmm. I felt like everything was well packed. Definitely a nice plane. We've already, obviously, we've already reviewed this one. And I really like the way that it flew, but it's definitely maybe not like the absolute easiest e-flight plane. Sometimes I have to figure out how to repack those and it's not as easy as it should be. <laughs> We're gonna use the NX-8 when we get ready to set this up. We are gonna go into great detail so that you guys can see the entire setup. Those of you that are asking, why don't you just use the bind and fly templates? That's because I want to teach people how to do this. I don't want to show them how to download a template. You can download a template if you want. There's nothing wrong with it, but I want people that don't know how to use a transmitter to learn how to use this multi hundred dollar tool that's going to be flying many of your aircraft. The quicker you get comfortable with setting this up, the quicker you can do plug and flies on your own without my help. 
and you might as well get used to it, start taking advantage of the full suite of features. There are a lot of features in there and we don't go into most of them to be honest. Okay, AR631, beautiful. Very clean mount, mm -hmm. nice and solid. Wires are clean. Look at that. Is that quadruple thick? Jeez, loving it, okay? That's where the wing adapts. Decals are perfectly applied. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Love the paint, love the way this looks. That's got a screw in it already. The windows look nice. This of course is where you're gonna get to your battery. Nice heavy duty strap, good plywood base it looks like. That's where your floats would go if you're putting your floats on. Mag magnet holds the tip down, that's always good. This one lifts from the front. So just keep that in mind. Might be worth putting a piece of tape on there just so you can lift it off easier. Um, okay, so with further, without further ado, we are gonna pick up first, well actually we gotta get the wing out. We oh. never actually showed the okay. people the wing. So now I think this vertical thing is technically still called a strake, but I'm not sure. I know a strake is like on the side of an engine nacelle. Let's see if we can point that out on this plane. I'm pretty sure there's strakes on engine nacelles but I don't see strakes on this because I didn't add them yet. Uh, that's usually a scale detail you don't get on models of this size. Mm. But I'm pretty sure these things are called, they might just be called fins actually on a wing. Um, but those things are really cool. I love those scale details. I apologize, tell me what that is if you guys are hearing me um, confused. Does this have LEDs? Yeah, oh yeah, it's got oh, LEDs. Yeah, there, there. I thought it did. It's got a strobe and Nice. The nav lights, and then it's got forward-facing oh, lights, right. which I really like. Cool. There's also an anti-crash beacon, I believe, up mm, here, yep. which is really good. I'd prefer to have a bottom-facing light, too, but, you know, it's still pretty dang good for a, a bind and fly plane. And then twin ESCs, which is really nice. This comes equipped with what appears to be, I'm just looking at some silvery-looking stuff. Oh, that's just a twisty tie. Yeah, that's holding up the wire. So this is an EC3, of course. So you're not gonna have a full uh, Avian ESC in here. This is gonna be just a regular like non-smart ESC. Everything is rubber banded together. That's a little bit uncustomary. I don't remember seeing a rubber band from Horizon on like anything. Mm, yeah. So a little bit different. Okay, LED plug. That looks like the ESC plug for obviously for the throttle. Then we have flaps. Then we have ailerons. Vast difference in length, which is kind of annoying but you know, it's really not uncommon at all in a plane of this caliber. So we're used to seeing that, it's not really a big deal. Flexibility of the wings. There's a little bit of flex, but this thing is not exactly a 3D plane. So it's not a big deal. It's more of a scale performance. It will do beyond scale, and I believe this one will do three or four S, but in my opinion, ailerons are all the way in the outside control horn, and those are big control horns, jeez. Mm -hmm. So that's, a little bit strange. Nice covers here, looks really good. Kind of wish they would have gone the extra mile to finish all the way out. And then mine's lifted here, that's a little bit annoying. But it does stick back down, so that's good. I'm gonna push those wires to kind of help hold those down. I hope those don't come off in the first few fly flights, but if they do, we can always deal with it. So that's actually not too bad. That was a really easy unbox. Mm -hmm. So tonight we wanna try to get done before the sunset so we can fly this thing for you. And uh, it has been terribly hot weather, like in the near 100 degrees all week long. It was 101 yesterday. 101 yesterday? And we need rain bad. Yeah. So the float plane's probably not gonna happen for a while. <laughs> but uh, we are gonna be floating in our sweat. Yeah. So this thing is gorgeous. Look at that American flag. America. By the way, you guys are probably not watching this on Father's Day as per usual on Brian Phillips RC. Uh, we are late to the show. Father's Day was some time back then. And so happy Father's Day. If you're my father watching this, happy Father's Day, Dad. Look what I got you, my twin Look. otter. Did I? <laughs> no, I, I don't think that's it. So in terms of landing gear, I remember there was good fairings on this. They look really nice. Um, the landing gear on this plane are super stout. They're kind of big. And if there was a complaint I had in terms of the scale performance, it would be the nose gear, not the mains. The mains don't bother me at all. It's just the nose gear, but they do that for a reason for people doing grass ops. 
These are definitely like, that's a little chunky for my taste. Come with three lockdowns. Use those to actually hold those in place. And then this of course is the mains. So you got two bogeys and they do flex pretty well. Uh, so you should have no problems with that. I can't remember which direction this goes, but we'll be finding that out in a few minutes. Um, also, this is a kit that's used for floats. So if you kind of look close at that, these are what join the wing to the float. So I'm gonna put it over here. What we do with our floats when we're not using the floats is I take two of them and I will either do it like this or I'll do it like this or I'll do it like this. And then I find whatever way they kind of nest nicely. And then I make a little kit with all the goodies and I lay them like this and I go around it with a stretch film and uh, that holds them all together. So when I'm ready to go fly, and if I remember, I mark them so I know what plane they belong to. Because when you start getting quite the, you know, quite a big batch of, you know, airplanes, you're gonna run out of, you know, memory in your brain. Mm -hmm. So then in here, I think these are more fins. Yep, more decorative fins, comes with a zip tie in here. I think these might be for the floats, not 100% sure. Then these things, more fairings. Yeah, I think these are for the floats too. Um, these are for, the tail. are for the tail. Yeah, so they're gonna go into here. And then these things, I don't know where they go. They're probably part of the float mechanism. So I think we'll just leave those here. These go with the wings. And then there's a whole bag of screws. So let's pop these out here. These ones go in here. And I remember there was something kind of weird about this, the way that that goes, oh, what yeah. direction you have to do that. Okay. okay. So those are your wing struts and you can see them in the picture there, right at the back in the engine nacelles. And that's what this hole is. They snap in like this, but that means that it is, um, it's not hard to take the wing off. It's still removable with those installed, but it's a little bit tricky and you need to be aware of that. So, all right, so inside this bag, we've got one nylon thumb screw for the wing, which is really nice. Again, like I said, removable, but not necessarily easy. And then a bunch of the same screws. That's always much appreciated. Mm -hmm. And then of course, these two come with the spinners. So those obviously go with the spinners and the props. Guys, that was a pretty painless unbox. You could have this thing put together really quick if you weren't filming it. So also, Leave in the comments below, we just started using our new Rhodes mics. So I'm gonna attempt to pull this thing off and show you if you haven't already seen, we just upgraded to the Wireless Go. We have links to that. If you're interested in copying that link or following that link and buying those from our links, you will help support our channel. Just like when you follow the links for the airplanes. We have lots of different items and we try to share what we're using and how we're using it. And you guys can make up your own mind if you like the way they're working. We obviously have been trying for a few months now to get our audio quality back up to par. We felt like we were really, really, really slipping. All of a sudden they started working crappy and then we moved in to the new uh, road mics. And I keep calling them roads, like plural. So please forgive me if you hear me doing that. I know it's road, not plural. Um, same thing with Lego. There's no such thing, evidently. Um, says but the Dutch. It might take us a few videos to kind of figure out exactly where like placement and stuff. So yeah, we're so we're trying to work it out. So there may be some slight improvements over the next few videos, but we would ask for your patience and feedback as long as it's positive and uh, strokes our egos. Otherwise leave them on somebody else's channel. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're gonna pause. We'll get the plane stand out and we're gonna get this thing built right now. Stay tuned. All right guys, so we're gonna build this uh, 1.2 meter twin otter by E-Flight. And we have a uh, Phillips screwdriver, nothing special here. It doesn't come with that, but I'm sure you have 47 of them if you're anything like me. We have a bunch of screws here. We have two screws for the props. We're gonna start with the landing gear, which is what the instructions suggest. So we have a little plane stand here. Thanks Tom for sending that out a long time ago. There's one screw you gotta undo here. That's gets you access to where you actually put your landing gear in, okay? So once you undo this one screw, I'm gonna grab that with my fingertips. You'll notice that it's longer and skinnier than any of the other ones, okay? So you wanna make sure you don't lose that, okay? 
And then if I remember right, I had a heck of a time getting this off of here on my first one. I can't remember for sure. Hmm. But I'm just gonna go in here from the side and just kind of pry it up a little bit. There you go. Okay, so then once you're under here, the landing gear go like this. This is the same area you're gonna mount your floats if you need floats. Okay, so then what do you put in here? So then there's- These things. Those huh? little white things. Yep, These things? with six screws. So you see this? They're just like this. And I'm gonna put this vertical. Camera crew, you might wanna come to the yep. other side there. I wonder if that'll make it easier. So we'll just drop that down like that. They do not make purchase all the way down to the plywood, just be aware of that. The screws will kind of pull it closer, but I can't remember if they ever actually make it all the way down. Mm. Okay, so these screws, there's a bunch of them, but don't lose them because I don't think they give you a lot of extras. Um, <clears throat> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna very carefully lay them right there. That's, that's living dangerously for you, YouTube. It is. Extremely dangerous. Okay, so remember, we're not going into that hole. That's gonna be reserved for when you put the last cover on. So we're just gonna kind of get these things. I'm gonna throw that through with the tip and then I'm just gonna line it up. Once you get the first one, it's quite easy. So I'm gonna show you what I did again in case you didn't pick up on that. Okay, so I got the screw ready. I'm gonna pick off the plastic, hold the screw in there with the screwdriver, and then you can hold it and actually see the tip and then just run it in there. It makes it super duper easy. It's kind of hard to film, but uh, the camera crew is, always seems to be kind of like opposite where I need her to be when we're doing builds. So then the second one, we can get started real easy, see? The big thing is this is plywood, so you can actually start the screw without having a hole there. So you need to be a little bit careful to make sure that you're hitting the hole and not just starting a hole next to the hole because then that'll allow you to misalign your parts. Okay. Nobody wants that. You don't want to misalign your parts because you're probably not going to get the very good penetration with, uh, you know, when you go to ram it in. And, you know, that's just not fun for anybody. Mm -mm. Especially if your landing gear break off. See how it pulled tight? Mm -hmm. But if you were to just push, it wouldn't go all the way, okay? So don't forget to screw all these in, obviously. This is a, a fairly easy plane to build. We're gonna go through the full radio setup. When they're in a bind and fly, it's, it's very easy to set up. But we're also gonna do, we're gonna try our best to show forward programming each time. Um, just so you can see if the forward programming is going to allow for modifications to the settings. Because that's something that Horizon is trying to work toward right now. Um, obviously a lot of the planes that are in production, there might be a few of them that are left still that don't have that ability. But that's one thing we're looking forward to and it's a big deal because then if you have a bind and fly plane that you crash and you say it's just, you know, we're just gonna let this one die you can break that receiver out because everybody knows those receivers are expensive. So, um, you know, if you can save 50 bucks on your next plane, that's kind of nice. Okay. So six screws seems a little much, but the landing gear on this plane are super stout and you aren't going to have a lot of problems. However, the foam does like to crush around here when you have a really aggressive landing. So just be aware of that. Try not to have really aggressive landings ever. Just always grease them perfectly mm -hmm. every time and you won't have that issue. So we're gonna, that was a joke. How's that working for you? Well, I don't know, not very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so by the way, off camera guys, I flew that F-16 the other day. Again, I really like that F-16. It's like probably one of my favorite planes right now. And everybody's always asking me, what's your favorite plane? Well, to be honest, it's kind of like whatever plane we're working on because we have so many, it's hard to kind of, you know, it's like picking your favorite kid. Everybody kind of has one, but you don't talk about it. You know, it's like private. Mm -hmm. you, you pretend like it doesn't exist, but it does. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, in our case, okay, so nose gear. Okay. In our case, I was out flying it the other night and it was so cool because the camera crew was gone with the kids and uh, I was just getting done with like a long day's work and then millions of projects at home. This is Phillips, by the way. 
See how that set screw's coming out now? Yeah. Okay, so get that all the way back. And then there's a set point here. So that tells you which direction it's supposed to go. So once it's down there most of the way, then you can start tightening that. Okay. Okay, so that's in there, good. And that extra little tab thing, that's just for the water rudder. It's if for the floats. floats on, right? Okay. Yep. If you're gonna do floats. So there are gonna be some extra pieces here. So we'll just show you what those extra pieces are. When we're done, we will know what they are. Okay, because I don't remember. All right, what was next, camera crew? Tail. Like the horrible horizontal stabilizer? Yes. Okay, so the horizontal stabilizer is going back here, obviously. There's a support structure that's built into the bottom of the wing. You don't have to put that in, which is really nice. Horizon is super, super good to us anymore. We almost never have to use glue and screws, which is just super, super nice, guys. I mean, even today, there's somebody that's been working on a dynam for six or seven weeks. Not us. <laughs> Not us. <laughs> that was just a that was just a really cheap low blow on dynam. Sorry, dynam. <laughs> I was gonna say something else, but I'm not gonna. Um, let us know when you get your issues resolved. So here we go. I was saying something and then I interrupted myself. It was a real morsel of, of delightfulness. You tend to do that. Yeah, well, I, I try not to. But it was something about like naming our first kids and then flying the F-16. I'm no, sorry. having favorite kids. Having favorite kids. And you were happy we were gone. It's kind yeah, of yeah, sounding. they were gone. They were gone. <laughs> and it was cool because I was able to fly the F-16 several times. And even though I greased like four landings, and I mean, they were good. They were good. I got into ground effect and I flared the plane. And what I was doing is I was coming down without flaps or flaperons deployed, none, none of it. Came in, flared, right in ground effect, and then deployed the landing flaps immediately as I got into ground effect. And it was just a glorious effect. I mean, it felt like you were never gonna stall. Um, problem is it still rolled out like 800 feet. <laughs> so I'm evidently not going slow enough when I do it. It is really, 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 really rewarding when you get into a more challenging plane like that and you can really grease a landing. And I know some of you guys are thinking, it's not that hard, Brian, you just need practice. And you, you would be correct. Because a lot of the things in RC aviation are all about learning to do it and then mastery. Um, I mean, yeah, anybody can get lucky and grease a landing once in a while. I mean, just look at me. But um, if, you, if you really get to being skilled, then what's gonna happen is eventually it's not gonna be a lot of work to grease a landing with a plane that you're familiar with. But if you're flying a new plane and filming it like a crazy person, like every three or four days, yeah. then you're bound to have you know lots of bad landings on YouTube. <laughs> just in case you're wondering how that works. Uh, so just uh, think about it the next time you're maining a plane and you don't quite have things set up right and then have mercy on me. Okay, so here we go. So that's four screws. Try not to like way over tighten them. I am not gonna attach the control horns. I found that it's really nice. If you can wait until you're doing your radio setup, it's a lot easier. Okay, so now these things actually snap in, I believe. Yeah, they're they're so. like somewhat removable. I wouldn't plan on removing them. So let's look at this. They want these things to slide in from the top, okay? See that? These clips hold them in. Okay. okay. So I have the plane upside down, so I'm gonna flip this right side up just to make it easy for you to see what's going on. And then you can tell because there's a pocket. So I'm gonna slide this through. There it is. Oh. Now, they're, they're sharp one direction and flat the other direction, so that's why I say they're kind of semi-removable. Yes, you could rip them out, but it's not gonna be like a comfortable experience for anybody. <laughs> so anyway, all right, so we have those hooked up and installed. So what's the next step, camera wing. crew? Do we gotta get the props on? Well, they have the wing first and then Where props. did they, they stuck it in the outside hole and the outside hole. So elevator and rudder to the outside hole. I okay. thought maybe this one was one of the planes where I went to the next step in for the elevator, but I mm. don't remember. I hate being starved for elevator 
But the other day we were flying an old 1.2 meter pit fire, spit fire. And uh, I had put the control arm all the way at the inside hole and it just flew terribly because of that. So I put it to the outside hole, adjusted the expo and that thing flew so much better than it ever flew, um, which was really cool. I mean, it's, it's always exciting to fix a problem that you didn't know you had. Okay, so this is the next step. We're gonna try to insert things so that we can do this in the easiest possible way. And the camera crew is going to help me move things so that I don't knock them over. Uh, the wing goes in, it rocks in, and then there's one thumb net that holds it on there, okay? So if you look from the side here, camera crew, like my side, there's these connection points to the AR631, but we're gonna have to bind this, okay? Because we need to connect this, but we can't really finish the job. Okay. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the wing. This is gonna be kind of out of the ordinary for us. I, I'm not even gonna hook anything up right now. I'm just gonna work through the process of, but we have to, because you can't bind it yet, because you need power to bind it. Right. So okay. there's a couple of different ways you can bind it without having this attached, but I would not recommend it. I would just say, do your best to get the wires where they need to be. There is a bind wire that goes to the front. Okay, see this? It might just be easier in this case to just use the bind plug than mm. to use the push button. Just given the fact that you have to plug all this stuff in, I think that's, that's what we're doing. I just made the executive decision. Okay. We're doing it that way. It's gonna be a lot easier. I know you really had your heart set on the other way. I hey, really did. I kinda need your help on this camera Where crew. Where do you want me to be? I need you to be over here and okay. hold this. And then I'm gonna keep working. Just hold right here. Okay. There you go. Cause I've only got so many yeah. hands, unfortunately. Okay. I can do that. So this, okay, so there's flaps. So I'm just gonna grab the first one I find and I'm gonna plug it in. That's one way to do it. White to white on the top is where the white is, the bottom is black. Okay, these are nice labels because you can see the colors through them. Mm -hmm. That's a cool touch. I'm sure they didn't mean to do it that way. It was a happy accident. Okay, so this says ESC. So ESC is gonna actually reach all the way down to the, oh no, they have an ESC extension, nice. Okay, so this is gonna plug here, black to black, white to white. Now, um, pumping the brakes for just a quick second, it's a little bit disappointing with a number of wires on here that Horizon hasn't come up with some awesome like multi-channel plug. They do it on the really high dollar stuff, the $600 planes, and then people are like, they're too expensive, which, you know, nobody wants to spend 600 bucks for a plane they think is worth 550. Right, let's just get right down to it. But those are some of the really nice features that you're getting on these new slide together planes like the Draco case in point. Just wanted to bring that up. If you have to take your planes apart, this would be a pain, but at the same time, it's really not like unmanageable. You can definitely do it. Okay, so this one's probably the LED. Nope, that's the bind plug. I don't wanna tangle that. So I'm actually kind of pulling the bind plug forward so that it's like not gonna be tangled with all the rest of the stuff. You having problems there, camera crew, or are you good? Well, do you mean to hold the wing too? I just want you to hold right where you're doing it. Okay. It's perfect. Okay. Okay, so yeah, I guess I kind of need you to hold that if it's gonna fall. So if you can do that, that'd be perfect. Right there, hold tight. Okay. So nice. it doesn't fall. I don't want you to hold the control surface if you can That's avoid what it. I'm trying not to do. Okay, so this is the LED plug. So the LED plug is gonna go into the probably, this one is labeled LED, great. And just so you guys know, if you were to ever, you know, like cheat in something extra, you can Y off of any of these wires and you can add LED power in that way. You can use a Y cable because you're just in parallel with the voltage on the receiver, which in this case is more than likely like five or five volts from the BEC on one or the other side of the electronic speed controllers. So this red and uh, black wire set, I'm actually gonna jog to the other side with my plugs here because this ESC wire, I'd rather have it all on the same side. It's gonna be less of a tangly dangly mess. And I don't know if you guys have picked up on this, but my cable management kind of is, a, um, you know, you just kind of do a little bit as you go. And every once in a while, you kind of pick the wrong side of a wire. Just adjust as you go, it's not a big deal. You don't have to get it right the first time because nobody's gonna do that. It's like impossible. And don't try to plan it out. Just start plugging stuff in and you'll have to work through it as you go. 
This isn't like a 10 story building here we're building, okay? So the white's on top, the black is on the bottom. They're both ailerons there. So that's ailerons, flaps, LEDs. That's everything, throttle, okay. So everything is ready to rock and roll. So now I'm just gonna basically slide this stuff down and get these wires in such a manner that they aren't gonna interfere with the two servos. So you can let go of that now. Okay. So now without a plane stand, you may actually have somewhat of an easier time at times with the wires, but also it's like this. When you're filming, it's like a recipe for back disorders because you're always trying to make room for the camera to see stuff. Okay, so now this is where all the screws are gonna go. The, ni uh, the nylon nut is right there. And then this keys into the front with these two tabs that are plastic. It's embedded into the foam, so it's nice and strong. I'm just kind of toying with the idea of possibly tying this up with a zip tie, which I'm assuming what that zip tie was for was for that step. Yeah, cause that, you don't want that. I need you to hold this again, camera crew, for just a minute. Just hold that right there. You need to actually hold it there cause I need the wires loose. Okay. So I'm gonna take that black zip tie. It may not be for this. I think it might be for tidying something else up later, but I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Obviously we have other uh, zip ties and um, just verifying as I go. If you could hold that a little bit tighter, it would be much appreciated, towards please. Just, you. I don't want you to move it. I just want you to hold it okay. like this right there. Make sure your ring doesn't like skewer the side of that. Okay, so here we go, right here. All right, so this, this is, the only reason we're doing this is just because the wires always have a tendency to want to drop into, okay, you can let go now. Okay. The wires always have a tendency to want to drop in right where the servos are, okay? So the servos are obviously down there for the elevator and rudder. Okay, so I'm just grabbing these two wires and pulling them forward as I bring the wing in. And one is the bind plug, it's actually stationary, and then the other one is the, yeah, see, I'm just looking because the camera's in the way. I'm catching some wires, so I want you to look at this. See where my middle finger is on my left hand? Mm -hmm. I had to push those wires. Okay. Once you push those wires, then things drop down in. And you do kind of have to force it. Once you're in, it's good. Okay. So I'm actually going to lay that aside for now. And a little bit tail heavy without a battery. And then these thumb nuts are super nice. My only complaint with thumb nuts is that if you don't intend to uh, move your plane and uh, take it apart when you move it rather uh, They are a little bit more ugly than just a standard one So like if you want this thing to be invisible when you uh, get ready to assemble your plane Take this off and use a dremel tool and cut off like 90% of that You've still got a little bit to get like a fingernail in there Or you can actually take that dremel and put a sideways cut and then you can use a flat bladed screwdriver to go ahead and put that in and out Maybe put a white decal on it and you're golden so now, the next step is to secure the wing struts. These struts slide in like this, and then they snap. I need to lay this down, and then I'm gonna support underneath and snap, mm. okay? So they are much easier in than out. I'm just telling you that now so that you're aware. If you know you're gonna be moving this plane a lot, this might be one of those details that you just see if you can tolerate without because getting that undone is a bear cat. It can, it can definitely be done. Yes, you can absolutely take the wing off. I know I had to do it on mine. I think it was maybe to like adjust the steerable nose gear or something like that. Mm. Okay, so as you can see guys, these pieces are really obviously gonna be for the floats. So we'll make up a little kit. So we got two, uh, fairings if you will we've got two other fairings for the back and then we've got all these mount points like this super high quality so we'll put together a little kit for that and okay so props this should be pretty straightforward uh, there's two of them and there's two positions for which to be mounted i have the screwdriver here i have the screws rather here you can see which one's which they have a picture, so you can tell if this one's going this way, it's gonna push the air, it's gonna pull the plane that way. So if you wanna go back a little bit, 
This is a nut. The nut comes off. These are super easy to put together. I'm never really a huge fan of just a single nut holding a prop on, but you have to remember if they are properly adjusted, meaning that they spin the correct direction, the spinning torque load will tighten the nut, not loosen it. So if in doubt, if you don't know if it's right, what you can do is you can put a lock washer onto that shaft and it'll make a huge improvement in your ability to tighten that down and it won't add much length. So many times you have a length issue when you're putting these together. Look how tight that is, mm -hmm. okay? Now I, I trust that these ones are gonna be well enough engineered and it's pretty obvious because now I've tightened it and as this goes like that, it's gonna to wanna to tighten. Now keep in mind, if you have braking on your ESC, and you tighten the nut like that, every time that you make a maneuver where you stop the prop by breaking, you will try to loosen that nut, okay? So it's, it's a double-edged sword, okay? You need to be aware of that. So you may wanna throw a little bit of Loctite, but do not get it on the plastic. Um, Loctite is totally fine. Um, just keep in mind, it's a little bit harder to undo stuff, obviously, that's the whole point. This one was just tightened a little bit too far, so now I gotta figure out how I can hold this while, see it just spins free. Oh, there's a screw in there. Maybe I can just do this. I'm gonna get some needle nose pliers. Okay, so needle nose pliers here. If you grab the shaft like this, you may damage your threads. So I'd recommend trying back here first. It's just barely, barely tighten. And remember, this is the other way. So that's why you a lot of people tend to tighten it on accident instead of loosening it because this is reverse threaded. Okay, so I'm going currently righty-tighty, righty, righty, loosey, <laughs> lefty-tighty. I always hated that phraseology anyway, even though it, it is true. Um, as a kid, I was like, mildly dyslexic and so I always had a really hard time with that concept because right and left was always hard for me as I was a kid uh, learning how to do all these see like tightening that there you go mm -hmm. but as you get a little bit older and you have a little bit more experience working with these things it becomes a bit of a, a secondary response because you've tightened enough screws and bolts and nuts in your life that you just kind of learn what direction things go Okay, so now we've got those installed. That one's gonna spin this way, that one's gonna spin this way, which just looks so phenomenal, if you ask me. Then these things are machined out so that they are interchangeable. Instead of having that machined to match the pitch of the prop, oh. it just goes on, which is, which is nice. I mean, it's, it would be cooler in terms of a scale finish if they were machined, but they would be a whole lot more impractical because then you'd have to order a left and you'd have to order a right and you guys, Better believe it, that would increase the cost so much for this little detail that's really not that super critical. Maybe on a big plane, if you had like a really, really good look at it, it'd be nice. But to be honest, on this small of a plane, I feel like that's a good compromise on scale detail. Because to make this mold and to release that on a plane like this, you might spend as much as like the fuselage foam. So just to redesign something like that would be extremely cost prohibitive. That's crazy. So if they make one, then they can use it ambidextrously, which is really nice. And then they can also release it for other planes and things like that. That's one of the things too, that you have to keep in mind from a pr production point of view. Um, every time that you see one of these like custom made parts, somebody had to design it, engineer it, make a mold, figure out how to actually teach some guy that um, maybe isn't like an expert on all things RC to run the machine, to make those parts. And then by the way, now you're gonna go make like 2000 of them today. And then you're gonna make like 2000 the next day and you might do that for four or five days. And then they have their lot built. So anyway, all right, for those of you that don't know anything about production, um, I do because I work in a production environment. We have a little bit of sag on this side. If you have a bad sag on your wing, there is a trick to that. And the trick is, you can use a, an iron if you want, but you just have to put a little something on there so it doesn't burn and it doesn't make it dimple too bad. But just be real careful, don't overdo it. Once you heat it, 
you can just literally bend it up a little bit. Mine actually pulled down because of the bolts, I believe is what happened. Cause mine was really, really, really straight before we did that. Okay. So I don't know if you can tell, but I just like kind of bent it back mostly. Okay. See that? See how much better it looks? That's kind of incredible how easy that was to adjust. I'm just straightening this. It looks terrible, but it's actually bending it straighter. Yep. So I would just do that if you're unhappy with that. Really easy. Okay, now I'm actually gonna put this back in the plane stand for the initiation that's coming up here pretty quick. Um, the bind and fly planes should come with that all done because it's not like we're going through the full forward programming, but I just want you to understand that positionally, when you have a plane that has safe, it is aware of its position on three axis, pitch, roll, and yaw. Actually, technically not yaw, I don't think, but it just depends on what type of aircraft. But in our case, it is aware of the change in yaw, but it's aware of its position here and here, okay? Because yaw would be a little bit harder. You'd almost need a GPS for that. Um, but AS3 x is aware of all three positions or all three axes. So we have another bag of extra screws. Those ones are more than likely gonna be used for the floats. We have one extra bag. You could fill something useful in there and bring it with you if you, want, if you wanted to. <laughs> so the next step on this plane is gonna be radio setup. So we're gonna get things uh, cleaned up and come right back for that. All right, folks, so we have to mark the CG. Um, we're not gonna test the CG yet because we need the battery and everything installed, which by the way, we haven't talked about it. We're gonna do 3200 3S and 2200 3S. Now, it doesn't say anything about compatibility on 4S, but if I recall, this plane was plenty powerful on 3S. And if you wanna risk it, go for it, but I'm not going to. I didn't feel like it was lacking in power the last time I flew it anyway. So we have a CG marking of 40 to 50 or 45 plus or minus five millimeters. Okay, so we're gonna come out here to 40 and just get right on that mark. Okay, so thank you, Danny, for sending these. That was nice of you to do that. Okay, so as you can see, it's a little bit hard to measure the CG from here. This is a nice straight wing, so you should be able to do it. You'll get good symmetry either way. Okay, so I just make a little dent. I'm gonna go out to about where the LEDs are between the LEDs and the nacelle. Okay, so Horizon, if you're listening, it'd be super nice if you would put a molding for the CG when possible. Understand that sometimes you don't even know when you first get the model exactly where you're gonna put it. Okay. So there's another mark. That is the only drawback to where we're marking this is that I had planned on using um, that dimple as my mark and blue is gonna be a little bit hard to see on black. So I'm just gonna push with the marker to get a little bit more of a dimple. I need to try to support that. Okay, so that'll give us our CG range. Of course, um, with a 3200 30, milliamp 3S smart pack, um, that thing is probably going to be in a quite different position than a 2200. Mm. So we'll talk about how that changes things and we'll try to mark it. In fact, why don't we mark that right now? 3200. It's nice if you, if you think about this detail, if you have, if you get to having a lot of planes, it's really nice to have this marked in the, in the canopy I'm finding mm -hmm. so that you don't have to search for it. When you're ready to fly, you just go ahead and do it. So this will be 3200. Uh, milliamp hour or 2200 milliamp hour and that's 3s okay correct mm -hmm. okay so then we don't have to search for what it is but we'll have this marker ready to mark the location of where to lay it when we're ready to do this so our next step will be radio set up even though we promised that on this step sorry guys we'll come back and do that next Okay, so we're gonna do the radio setup on this Twin Otter 1.2. This is version two. It's got the new AR631 receiver. And what we have here is a 2200 milliamp 3S with only one lead. Of course, that makes it at gen two. So there is no balance charge. Um, 
plug, but there is the discharge, which is an IC3 with the smart lead. The smart lead isn't gonna be used on this plane, but it is gonna be used in the charging. So obviously you don't wanna like cut that off or anything. If you would ever upgrade this to Avian ESCs, you could do thrust reverse, it'd be pretty cool, um, but it's gonna cost a pretty penny because you need two of them. This is the 3200, this happens to be a Gen 1, so it does have a balance charge plug. And then of course the IC3, so it's like the Hextronics 3S plug, which has four wires, okay? This is the two batteries that we're gonna be using when we get ready to do the CG testing and all that good stuff. But first we have to get a radio setup done. So the first thing we wanna do is, of course, fire on your transmitter, scroll down to system setup, disconnect RF, model select, add new model, go to create. Make sure your switches at this point are where you want them for when you would normally start it up, okay? Then we're gonna scroll down, we're gonna go to model name, it says 36 colon space, and then there's an A, so this is where we go ahead and type in Twin Otter 1.2. Now, pertaining to this dear valued customer warning, we just wanna let you know that as a dear valued customer that we are, we did check online. We didn't notice a big deviation in the stuff on this manual, mm -mm. okay? So I think that was more of like a CYA for future changes. We didn't see anything that needed to be updated. So if you're watching this in like two years and it's like 2023, um, and we have like 10 million subscribers, <laughs> <laughs> then thank you. Um, but secondly, uh, that a little bit optimistic maybe. Well, maybe a little. But if you're, looking, if you're looking and you're realizing that there is something significant there, please remember things change and we don't control that in the future. Okay, so we're in the menu structure here. We're getting ready to name it. We're gonna scroll in, click change it black, and then it allows you to move to a different value, which in this case is gonna be a capital T. And then you scroll over and click, and then we'll do a W, and we'll just continue this process until we have Twin Otter 1.2 and come right back. Well, I'm gonna call it Twin Otter V2 because this is our second Twin Otter, but I don't know that we had the first Twin Otter in the DX8. I think we had it in our DX18. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, then I'm okay with just basically setting this up as a twin otter 1.2, but I'll still call it a V2 just so I can remember for my own understanding. You guys wouldn't have to necessarily do that. All right, folks, so we've got the twin otter V2 1.2 meter. I definitely would encourage you to put your size class in case there'd be like a carbon Z twin otter. Horizon, if you're listening, that would be freaking sweet. <laughs> just saying. The beeping's normal in my experience. Um, aircraft type, we need to set the wing. Okay, this is where you'll go to page six of the manual so far. So inside this manual, if you scroll, there's two pages. Two or three pages are really helpful. Uh, center of gravity is usually marked. Uh, E-Flight does a great job on their manual, so one of the best uh, companies for that. The computerized transmitter setup, that's where we're gonna set things up. You can see this is an AR-631 um, in here. If this says AR-637B, then that means you have a gen, like a version one, which is fine. It's still gonna basically fly exactly the same, uh, but you just have the older technology there and it's fine. Some of you guys are buying these things from, um, you know, hobby shops, but just remember we're your local hobby shop. Mm -hmm. We are. So if you, if you wanna support your local hobby shop, AKA us, you can buy from the links in the description below and you are actually financially supporting us by doing that. You don't pay any extra, but it does help us a lot. It's, um, Hard to explain how much it helps. So um, the other part is this uh, two different binding procedures. They're suggesting using a bind plug, which is ironic because typically we get bind plugs with the AR631 equipped equipment. For whatever reason, this plane actually need to use the bind plug because the way the wing is installed and we didn't get one. So that was a miss in my opinion, but I, it will be forgiven if this plane is, is as good as the last one was. So that being said, I also noticed this here as we're looking, it looks like this is three millimeters, approximately three millimeters up or down. Is that right? I don't know if they want that down three millimeters. I don't know, we'll worry about it. They basically want the elevator to be within three millimeters of center, okay? Um, so get out your measuring tape. Just kidding, guys. So we'll show you how to bind it so that it binds with safe select on, which means that you're gonna have safe on all the time until you assign a switch on your transmitter to turn it off, 
which we'll walk you through. It's very easy. Or you can buy an AS3X only, which means you don't need that additional channel. Now, the NX-8 has plenty of channels to fly this plane. It has fixed landing gear, so you have throttle, rudder, elevator, ailerons, flaps. That's it. Then you've got, you know, in my case, three additional channels that you can use for assignments for control of additional accessories. Okay? So just keep that in mind. If you have the NX-6, it's actually seven channels even though it says six channels right on this little screen thingy right there where it says six, it says six channel DSMX 2.4 gigahertz radio system. So when you're looking at it and then you go into the monitor and you see an extra channel, it's, it's not in your imagination. There is an extra channel. Okay. That was so that you could control safe select on retract equipped planes with regular ailerons, flaps, and all the goodies. Okay. So getting back to the point. So we're going to show you how to do that. Just wanted to full disclosure mention the fact that this didn't come with a bind plug. We had one from, you know, like 400 other parts. Mm -hmm. So in our case, it wasn't a big deal. If it's your case, um, all that a bind plug does is it shorts uh, the signal to ground. The middle pin is power, okay? So signal shorts to ground, and that's how the receiver knows that it's going to need to go into bind mode. We'll talk about that more in a few minutes. So we have to go into aircraft type, and this is how I got off topic. We are in this section because we have an NX-8, so it's right there, NX-8. Previously, we had a DX-18, so we haven't had a lot of changes. Camera crew is going to come a little bit closer so she can see this for you guys. Okay, so it says aircraft type, model select aircraft type, wing is one aileron and one flap. Okay, so it says aircraft type, wing, One aileron, one flap. And you're like, but Brian, there's two ailerons and two flaps. No, there's one aileron circuit and one flap circuit or one servo circuit that are tied together, okay? That's the difference, because if you get into more advanced, you can set up two ailerons and two flaps, but you have four complete channels that control all of those control surfaces. That, these different wing types are the reason that forward programming is necessary and helpful, because it used to be extremely complicated to set up AS3X because AS3X only operated on the three basic channels, sets, like uh, ailerons, elevator, rudder, okay? Now, you can have a super complex wing type and the receiver, once you do forward programming, assigns everything the way it should be, which is oh so good, especially with flaperons, okay? Especially with crow or reflex, okay? That's where the ailerons go up and continue to act as ailerons and the flaps go down and just act as flaps. Whereas if you have a full length aileron, you can use them as flaperons and instead of just like, you know, like rolling, you know, you can also flip them down and then keep controlling your roll as well. And then you can get even more flap deflection. It's pretty cool. Or you can put them up and it's called spoilerons at that point, okay? If you don't know about that, we'll go into more detail on a plane that actually has those. So. That was one of the things you have to set. Then you have to set up this set channel assign default switch for a new model. Okay, so whatever. We'll mess with that later because that has to do with the um, safe select. Okay, so we're going to walk into this and just get that set. So I'm going to click to save that. Next, I'm going to go to the airplane. I think there's an airplane that's fairly close. That's a float plane. Good enough for me. Okay, so we're not gonna do the channel sign yet. We'll get back and do that later. So now do they talk about, they talk about dual rates being high, 100, low 70. Expo is high on 20 and low on 15. Goodness gracious. Um, servo travel to 100%, that's pretty typical on AS3X equipped planes. And then throttle cut to minus 130. I do not like minus 130, here's why. If you have the throttle cut set to minus 130 and something is wrong, it's possible that when you unthrottle cut that the, the props can start. It happened to us just the other day when we were setting up a plane. This is me. I've done it hundreds of times, guys. I'm not just making this stuff up to make your life more difficult. Minus 130 is very nice when you have a gas plane because you can use that as a kill switch because throttle is idle, then throttle from zero to 100, then kill, okay? So you still use minus 100, zero, plus 100 in your throttle range. And with Spectrum, you can set as high as plus 150 and minus 150. But throttle is idle, then throttle, then kill. 
Okay, that's why minus 130 is the default. I think it should be set to minus 130, uh, excuse me, to minus 100, and that's what I'm doing. So you can follow me. You can follow what the manual says. I don't care which one you do. Just don't blame me if you get cut, and be careful, please, because props, uh, generally, it's a good idea to not install them until you are 100% sure that you're gonna be safe, especially on these planes, because I wanna show you something real quick. When you pick this plane up, look where your hand is. It's not gonna hit right away, but if you pick it up right there, chop suey. You're going to the hospital. And that is, incidentally, safety brake. What are the two things that hurt people in this hobby? Lipos and props, okay? Anything beyond that is just made up stuff that the FAA and your uh, prudish Karen neighbors have to say about airplanes. They have no clue. There's very little risk of getting hit in the head, but it has happened. And there are people that have been injured, but it's extremely minor, like one out of 10 million people, okay? It's like nothing. It's not even statistically on the charts, okay? What happens to people is they cut their hands on these things. They are sharp and they move extremely fast. What happens to people is they abuse lipos and they start small fires. Typically, it amounts to nothing. Sometimes people burn down their vans down by a river. Sometimes people burn down their beautiful homes. Sometimes they burn down their garages. It has happened and it will happen again until everybody is super careful and nobody makes mistakes, which will never happen, in case you're wondering. So please be careful. Lipos store a lot of energy. And even though I tend to be quite careful with my leads and my chargers, I have a lot of them. If I had a small fire, it'd be bad. So just use your best judgment. I am not your mother. I am not your nanny. Please be careful. I don't wanna hear about your house burning down. I don't wanna hear about people getting hurt. I don't wanna hear about people getting their hands cut off because these things are pretty critical when you're flying your radio controlled airplanes. But also along the same lines, I've, I've uh, never heard of somebody that got their hand cut so bad that they couldn't get it fixed at the hospital, <laughs> which is usually on the good side. Uh, but again, that's not a very fun process and it's quite expensive um, with or without insurance. So let's just avoid those two things. Those are the two primary safety features, which is why we're gonna talk about throttle cut next. Let's do that. So now that we have throttle cut set up, we're gonna go down, or excuse me, now that we are ready to do it, we're gonna go into throttle cut, switch, inhibit, it's gonna switch, just move the switch, it assigns it to switch H. There's some other things you can do, okay? I'm not gonna do those, I'm just gonna look down in the monitor, make sure it's not moving, it's not moving, and then it's gonna move. Okay, you see it's at minus 97, see how it goes to minus 100. That's only a 3% divided by two or 1.5% difference between here and there. That's not enough for the ESCs to typically activate. Now, if you add another 30 in there, that means that you're adding 15% of overall throw in that ESC throttle range, okay? I typically bind with my throttle hold or throttle cut on. That's just for me, it's, if the thing loses radio contact, it's gonna defer to the, um, basically the way you bound it. There is a fail safe, and that means the throttle's gonna shut off. I want my throttle to shut off. I don't want it to keep flying, okay? If you've ever had a flyaway, which I've never had, but I've heard a few people have had them, a lot of people have them evidently, um, that's what happens when you have your throttle hold not on and you lose signal. Now, the ESCs are supposed to default to 0% um, throttle output with a loss of radio signal, but sometimes people go in and change the default setting, uh, change from the default settings and thus reset their fail safe. I don't talk about fail safe almost ever because I've never really had to reset it from whatever stick conditions I wanted in, okay? That's important, you'll get used to it. Um, I've, never, I've never depended on something like fail safe to save a plane. It's more of like to save the dude that isn't paying attention that gets hit, okay? Which again, doesn't happen hardly ever, okay? If it did, trust me, we would know about it. Okay, now walking out of the menu, the throttle cuts on. We're gonna go down to timer. Now this is an AR631 equipped plane, so that means that you don't have full, full, full telemetry. telemetry. You have like a flyby telemetry, uh, which means as you get within close proximity, you're gonna get your telemetry. If you're way, 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 way out there, you may not get updates quite the same as you would if you had an AR637T, which is full telemetry, where you're gonna have telemetry way out there, plus that has a barometer installed. So that's some of the key principal differences 
uh, between the AR-631 and the AR-637T, okay? The AR-637TA comes in the models that are Bynum flies, like the expensive P-51 or the expensive FW-190, which also incidentally have avian ESCs. Ironically enough, if you had avian ESCs in here, then you could get your voltage pack, your pack voltage and your cell voltage is individual cell voltages. So you plug in a 3S, you know that this one's at 4.2, 4.2, 4.19, and so on and so forth as you drag down. You'll see those changes, which is really nice on your telemetry. Probably the most important thing that you could squeeze into telemetry and Horizon, I would like to adopt telemetry for batteries. It is the most valuable. Pack voltage should be a no-brainer. It should always be on there. Receiver voltage is only secondary importance, if you ask me. I would rather have individual cell voltages like the lowest one. That would be fine for me. Because really, I care about the lowest one. That's what I would set my warnings to. So if you have a saggy pack, you'll know. Okay, just some thoughts, some feedback, constructive feedback. Horizon is very responsive to people that work with them. So hopefully they're listening. Anyway, uh, getting back to the point, we're getting really into the weeds on this one. You Sorry. Are. Okay, so we have our timers here. I didn't see a time six, on here. Six. six minutes. It's like on page two in the initial little box. Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. somebody the other day was asking me about this. This quick start information is for people to do plug and flies typically because it shows all the deflections of the control surfaces. So like if you were to look at the side of this surface, okay, this is an aileron, okay? Ailerons go up and down. They roll the plane. They work in tandem between the left and the right aileron. They're on the outboard portion of the wing, not the inboard portion typically. The inboard portion control is called a flap. The flap goes down. It changes the shape of the wing. The shape of the wing thus changes the speed by which you can fly before you stall, which is when you fall out of the air, okay? Did I get that all mm -hmm. really quick? Sure. There's an elevator correction, meaning that when you deploy flaps, the nose typically goes up and it creates what we call a balloon. That's why we delay the flap um, behavior to two seconds usually. If it's like 10 seconds, you wouldn't know because the balloon would just, you would just correct with your brain or the AS3X would keep up with it, okay? But in this case, we always set a little bit of elevator correction, which is going to help pitch down. So you're gonna have a down elevator correction, okay? Takeoff flaps are typically about two thirds to one half or sometimes, in my case, one third to one half of the full landing flap. Full landing flaps are way down, takeoff flaps are barely deployed because you just change that flap, uh, the shape of the wing, and you want to increase lift without creating a lot of extra drag. Full landing flaps, you want the drag and you want the extra, um, it's, it's not actually creating extra lift per se, it's just allowing you to fly slower. It also changes the overall attitude of the plane and that you can point the nose down and still continue to slow down, meaning that it's almost like you took this wing and you tipped it. So that allows the pilots in real life to see the runway as they approach the runway. If you came into a landing like this, where would the runway be? You'd be looking through the plane, right. like you literally wouldn't see. So the attitude of the plane, plus you're not flying uphill, you're flying downhill because you're going to the ground to land. Okay, so you change the shape of the wing like it's there, and then you can fly straight like that. These planes are flown out of some of the most tight areas and they can come in and just do super steep approaches, okay? So the angle of attack is the direction that the plane is pointed, okay? It also refers to the angle of attack of the wing structures themselves, I believe, too. Oh, there's the sun. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that doesn't screw up our video too bad. Um, okay, so six minutes. So uh, scrolling into the timers, time, change it to six. One out is no longer inhibited, it's active. So when I move this over 25%, you can see down here, it's not actually outputting anything, but this will still start the timer, okay? Scroll the next, scroll the next. I don't want a warning at one minute. I don't want a warning at 20 seconds. I want a warning at 10 seconds and I want it in the in the term, um, in the form of a voice warning. So 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Expiration, I want tone and vibrate. So we'll walk out. Walk out again. You'll notice the timer has started. I'm going to clear the timer with the back button or the clear button. See how it starts? And then it just keeps running. That's what one out means. If it wasn't one out, it would only start when you're over threshold. In this case, threshold is 25%. So if you set it to 35%, anything over 35%, it would come on. If you set it to 75%, you'd have to have 
76% throttle all the way up to 100% throttle for the timer to run. Otherwise, it would not run. That'd be a little bit weird, but you could do that on a sailplane maybe. Okay, so I'm gonna clear the timer because it's gonna be annoying when it goes off. Um, also, we were talking about these rates. These rates are low rates and high rates, and it speaks to the amount of deflection. So we were talking about the control surfaces earlier. If this were to go up eight millimeters, you literally take a ruler and you measure how far it deflects from this point up, and that's eight millimeters. With the high rates, it would go 12 millimeters, which is, um, you know, of course, just a little bit further. So it's gonna impact change faster, and it's gonna impact change more, especially during low speed flight, okay? So they talk about the center of gravity in this, and they talk about the all up weight of the aircraft. So really cool, it talks about what you need to complete the plane. Of course, you're gonna know that because it's a bind and fly in our case, you're not gonna have to get a receiver, but if you get this as a plug and fly, um, which by the way, you can always follow my links and then you can just back out and get whatever you want. Or a lot of times we'll have search results for this twin otter. So like if there's three different size classes by the time you're watching this video, maybe there's a UMX, maybe there's a, like a carbon Z, which is like a big one. Um, then there's the 1.2, let's say. Then you can just uh, see whatever size you want and you can get those. So you'll be supporting us. And if you don't ever find a link in our description, just go to the master link for Horizon Hobby. If you're over in Europe, you can follow the Tower Hobby links and you can ship uh, to Europe. Or if you're in South Africa or some, somebody said in South Africa, they aren't shipping to South Africa. So just go to the Tower Hobby links. You'll still be supporting our channel. You can still buy all the same items there. It just has a different look and feel on the website, but you're buying from the same company. They bought Tower Hobbies during a bankruptcy settlement. Uh, I think it was like a chapter 13. I'm not sure. I don't know all the details. I just know that Tower and Horizon are one now. So, getting back to the point, we were just getting way into the weeds today. I know, the sun's going down. I know, I know, I know, but we can't film with it blinding us yeah, like that. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so we're super close. So basically, we're at the point now where we need to set up the flaps. So the flap system is outlined here, which is really nice. So I'm gonna click, scroll down a little bit further to flap system, it's currently inhibited. Highlight, and then switch whatever switch you want. I'm gonna use switch B. Click, and then it's gonna give you the ability to change these settings. They want minus 100 for zero, zero, and then plus 100. Okay, so minus 100, click, and then scroll. Guys, if you need this slower, pause the video, look for the gear in the lower right-hand corner of the screen, if it's not changed already from YouTube, and then click the gear. You can change the playback speed. The audio does playback slower. It does playback faster. You might make me sound like a chipmunk. If you wanna see a two hour video in an hour, you can do that. If you wanna see a five hour video in two and a half, you can do that. You can actually go faster, but that's okay. I don't necessarily want you guys to skip over everything necessarily all the time. If you just wanna get the information, you wanna do it faster, click the gear, change the playback speed, and then you can watch the whole content a little bit quicker. So, all right, so elevator correction. It looks like 25% elevator at zero, which would be like our takeoff setting. So you can see right here how it's changing. Shows in the monitor down here. Okay, so I'm gonna change this to 25. You'll notice it's a 25 positive, okay? But look what happens to the elevator. See, now I'm gonna change this one to 35. I've also found that to be true. It seems like you about two thirds correction for takeoff and about one third more for landing. Okay. Huh, that's weird. It seems like that should be backward. Did we have to flip the elevator? No. Because it'll tell you if you need to flip. That's weird. It is a positive value. The absolute value is 35. I'm hmm. not sure if that's correct or not. We'll find out. So then uh, the speed, click and scroll over to two seconds and then click to acknowledge. And then you have to do it for each of the switch conditions. Otherwise, it's only going to be two seconds from here to here. And then it'll be fast from here to here. Okay, see that? How it moved quick on the output. Now watch this. Now it moves nice and smooth all the way up and down. You also notice that auxiliary two is changing. That's because the assignment for auxiliary two is still on switch B, which is the default. We're gonna change that here in a few seconds because I wanna use switch D or switch A for safe select. Actually, we'll use switch A for that. So A is already assigned to gear, which is not gonna be used. So we wouldn't even have to make a reassignment on the flaps, but if you needed that switch for something else, then you can go in and do that. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So scroll down to system setup. Disconnect, whoops, scroll down to system setup, click, scroll over to yes to disconnect RF, that's why that light goes off. Scroll down to channel, assign. This is where you can make your channel assignments. I'm gonna switch this to switch D just to get it out of the way. Then I'm gonna walk back out. 
Now everything is set. Scroll over to man, uh, monitor mode, which is where you can see everything working. So that's still gear. That's auxiliary two. And then flaps doesn't deviate anything with, with um, auxiliary two. Okay, auxiliary three is still on the knob. Okay. Warp back, throttle holds on. Sticks are centered, except for the throttles all the way down. Gear is in the down condition. This would be up, this would be down in my normal setup. Okay. Do you want to do dual rates and expo? Dual rates and expo, yep, we'll do that. So dual rates and expo, I deviate from the uh, setup here. They show uh, high at 100 and then low at 70 and then uh, expo is 20 or 50. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you what I set up. I pretty much always set these this way to start. Okay, so first I go into aileron, I click, I change it to switch F. Switch F is all gonna be, it's gonna be all of them, okay? So on the lowest setting, I'm gonna go to like, uh, they call out 15, which is a lot. So I'm gonna do 10, then I'm gonna do like 20, then I'm gonna do like 30, whoops. Then I'm gonna check the rate, I'm gonna set the rate down to 90. So you'll see it's like 10, 20, and then 30, but then we drop the rates down. So in the middle setting, that's where we're gonna start. We'll have about half as much, and then we'll have about double as much. So when we're flying, we can get to the ground. If it's too sensitive, we can uh, back it off. This will be less sensitive. And if it's not sensitive enough, we can drop it to this. Okay, so that gets us out of hot water. You always have to have an out with a new plane. Okay, so I'm gonna set that to switch F. We're gonna go ahead and set that to 10. Then we're gonna set that to 20 which will be where we'll start. And then we'll set this to 30 and we'll drop the rates down to 90. Then we'll scroll to rudder. You'll notice I'm going really fast. If this is too fast for you, I apologize. I'm not trying to um, make you guys have a hard time with this, but that if this is your first plane, first of all, maybe not a great first plane, but not a terrible first plane, I would recommend something a little bit simpler but honestly, this wouldn't be a terrible first plane. It does have safe. It's just a little bit fast. You're gonna have a hard time landing it, not having damage. It's good value. It's, this is a good value. This plane is cheap, comes with a lot of stuff. So I really like it. It's a good size, really easy to get in and out of stuff. The, the long straight wing, and it doesn't sit very tall. You see how it's not very tall? Mm -hmm. And then when this sits flat like this, the tail is almost the same size as the nose, okay? So that's a big deal. Sometimes you'll have tails that are like quite tall, like almost half as big as the plane. So this one sits pretty good. Okay, so now that we have all those settings set, we can go ahead and throttle hold, make sure all the switches are in the right direction, which they are. Now we're gonna talk about the binding. Binding for AS3X only is quite simple. You put the bind plug in and come on over here. This is, we're just gonna show you the page, both of them. Okay, so you can pause if you need to look this over. You can also go to Horizon Hobby, just follow my link, and then you can get the supporting documentation. Uh, just scroll down a little bit and you'll see where that stuff is. Okay, so this is how you're gonna do this. So this is how you're gonna do it. This is uh, switching on save select binding sequence, or switching off save select binding switch, or with a bind plug, okay? You can also do the same technique essentially by using the push button, but as you can see, the push button is not exposed. It's really hard to get to. So we're gonna use a bind plug on this one. So install the bind plug, plug in the battery, remove the bind plug, then bind to the radio, okay? Otherwise, if you wanna leave safe off and you don't have the channel to give up maybe, then you're just gonna plug this in, do the full bind procedure when you're done, pull it out. Okay, so that's the way we used to do it all the time. Okay, so we're gonna start with a 2200 milliamp hour pack. Uh, some people asked me the other day to go into the bind mode for this. I'm just gonna do it the way I know because I wanna teach you guys the easiest way. This is the most universal way. I'm gonna shut off the transmitter. I'm gonna have my throttle hold on. Sticks are down, it's ready to go. I'm gonna hold this and then power it on when I'm ready. I'm not quite ready though. So I'm gonna lay this down in a place where I can reach. I'm gonna be prepared to secure the plane so that if something goes wrong, I don't get caught, okay? So the first thing I'm gonna do is take this plug I'm gonna go ahead and get this plug ready because you do have to have that plugged in before, right? Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna plug this in. You'll notice that it shorts between the black and the white, which is only outside two wires. Okay, this, this tells you the safe select and the AS3X only binding procedure. So you wanna make sure that's away from things that are important like the props, so you don't want those to get uh, interfered with. Okay, so now keep in mind, I want this level when I start it. I'm gonna put this out of the way. I'm gonna lay this in here and you'll notice that keeps that from tipping up. Then I'm going to plug in, before doing binding, 
Now I'm going to unplug this. You would notice that there's a light flashing if you could see it, but you can't. Now I'm going to press and hold this button. Then I'm going to turn it on. So I'm holding down the button. It says binding. Bind fail. Bind fail. Okay, so it failed. If that happens, it's not a big deal. Don't freak out. Just go ahead and unplug your plane to get it secured. Okay, I'm going to turn this off. Okay, so that's going off. We're going to try it again, the exact same procedure. Sometimes that happens. If you're too close, I always try to film really close. It's actually closer than called for. Plugging in the power, waiting a second. Then I'm going to unplug this. Okay, it's unplugged. Now I'm going to hold this a little bit further away while holding the bind button. I'm going to turn it on. Okay, so it's bound. One dance, two dance. Okay, so that's the one dance and two dance. This is a symptom of the throttle cut and the position of the throttle sticks. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and shut off my throttle hold while holding the plane. Nothing starts, that's good. Throttle all the way up, all the way down, nothing's changing, so that's a good sign. I'm gonna go ahead and throttle hold back on. Now I'm gonna unplug my plane. You don't have to do that, that was just a simple test. Now that it's bound, I don't have to bind, so I could actually tuck this out of the way. Now I'm gonna plug in the battery. It's plugged in. Wait for things to initiate. One dance, two dances. Now, if yours does this, I'm gonna show you how to fix it. Check this out. Trim down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. I'm gonna go to monitor. Uh, monitor is here. Eventually it's gonna arm. Okay, it's still not armed. You see that? So, now I'm in the center again. Okay, so it didn't arm, so I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna hold the plane on the nose and shut off, shut off my throttle hold. Then I go to monitor, make sure that my output is moving. See, the output's moving. So in this case, I'm gonna retrain my ESCs. Okay, the way you're gonna do this is throttle all the way up, throttle hold off. And you're like, Brian, that's dangerous. Not really, in this case, it's the only way to do it. Okay, you're gonna plug this in. You're gonna listen for the dance. There's the dance. Now I'm listening to the ESCs and then all the way down. Okay. Okay, nothing changed. That's, there was a remark in this manual about the beeps. So let's see what the beeps say. I wanted to reprogram the ESC. Okay, continuously repeating single tone, abnormal throttle signal, and then throttle signal not at low position. Throttle stick not at low position, throttle reversed, trim raised. Do we have to reverse the throttle? And if so, hmm, that's weird. I don't really see anything in there about it. I don't it. see it either. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna try this again. Sometimes it doesn't work the first time. Throttle holds off, stick is all the way up. Plugging in the power, listening, controlling the plane in case things would start. Did you hear the beep beep? So now we're gonna listen for weird noises. So that's the first setting in the ESC programming. And then down, all the way down. Hopefully I got it in time, I might have skipped. There's a single beep. Listening. Okay, so we came out of the setup menu. So it's still not one to start, so we're gonna try this again. Sometimes it's just the way it goes, it's kind of frustrating, but it is what it is. Okay, so starting again. Now we're gonna let it fully boot, start up, everything is working, throttles all the way up, I'm reteaching it, throttle all the way down. Okay? Now it's armed, I think. Okay, we're listening. 
Okay. So we'll pause it real quick and come back. Okay, so I reset the throttle cut to minus 130. So let's talk about this for a minute. I put the throttle position down to minus 130 in the throttle hood or throttle cut. Okay, so throttle cuts on and I want you to see what happens. This is why I don't like minus 130. Okay, it starts up, everything's gonna initiate. Just waiting for it to start. Okay, it's starting. Okay, so everything's working. Now watch, this is super exciting. Okay, so now I'm gonna put the throttle hold on and it's safe now, but now I have to, re I have to reset the throttle range, which is what I wanna do. So throttle hold is off, throttle's all the way up. I'm walking out of the throttle hold menu. Now I'm gonna plug this in with the throttle all the way up. I'm gonna control the plane, but not make it bounce around a bunch. One dance, two dances. That means save select is on. Okay, now stick all the way down. Now hopefully that's gonna exit the setup menu. Okay. Okay, good, now I think it must have taken it. Okay, that's good. I'm listening, these different tones are in the ESC menu. Okay, so you see now it's not happy again. So the throttle holds on, then the throttle holds off and it starts. So now listen, the way you can resolve this is now you can trim. You hear what I'm doing? Okay, so at minus 30, you see it, it says minus 30 that's where your throttle is going to stop. Okay. So that's exactly the same as turning on your throttle hold. So I'm not crazy about having to do it, but I've had this happen on a few different planes. So there's full throttle. Okay. And then there's throttle hold. Okay. So we're just going to do that for the sake of this video. Um, and I will do a little bit more research on that. I want to fly the thing before the sun sets. If you guys look out there for a second, it's super pretty. This is beautiful sunset. Okay, so timer's cleared, throttle holds on. Um, what I might do is off camera, we'll see if we can figure it out and then we'll do like a clip at the end of the video uh, so you guys will know how to do it if I come up with a better solution. Otherwise, you know, you can just copy that exact setup. Um, because remember, we bound with throttle cut on, okay? So that's okay. <laughs> so now, the other thing too is you have to remember that the fail safe position is not necessarily the same if you change your condition of your throttle hold when you bounce. So this would be a good time to rebind everything uh, if you've done it wrong, okay? So let's do this though. Let's talk about making an assignment for safe select. Okay, so your plane is plugged in. We're confident that the throttle hold is gonna work and it's not gonna allow these things to start and spin and cut us. We've tested it. Now, we need to make an assignment for safe select, okay? So I'm just gonna drop this in here loose and then throw the lid on so that it doesn't pop out while we're testing. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now these, this is why you gotta be careful. You see how my hand's going in there? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. That means safe is trying to level the aircraft. Also, we need to set up our control horns, okay? So, in order to set up our control horns, we have to have safe turned off because safe will automatically apply a little bit of up elevator. Okay, so the way we do this, it's in the manual, if you wanna see it. We showed it earlier, but we can show it again real quick. This is the process. It says five times, that's very confusing, okay? It's actually five full sequences. So whatever switch you're gonna use, I'm gonna use switch A. Throttle holds on, you can do it with the throttle hold on. You can do it without it on. Sticks down and in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, see, I got it. Once it starts changing, you're, you're done, okay? So now, Again, it's on, safe is on, safe is off. AS3X doesn't activate until you give over 25% of throttle output, notwithstanding the throttle cut. If the throttle cut's on, it doesn't know that it's over 25%, so it won't be activated, okay? So now I need to reverse this one servo, so I'm gonna go to servo setup, travel, and then to reverse, I'm gonna switch gear. That just means that safe is off here, and safe is on here, okay? So now, when I'm flying along, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a test here. So I'm gonna give a little bit of throttle to activate AS3X. Okay, so throttle hold is on. I can see the rudder moving. I can see the elevator moving. I can see the ailerons moving. Let's see if they can see. 
Okay. The rudder, watch when I go this way, it's going to point this way. Okay. You just need to hold still and I'll move it like this. Can you do that? See how it moves that way? See how it moves that way? It's kind of hard to tell, isn't it? It is hard to tell. Okay. So. Sorry guys, just ignore the background. See how as I tip it, it moves. It's very easy to demonstrate that on camera when I hold the camera right next to it. I'm looking at the ailerons too. Aileron up, aileron down. Good, aileron up, aileron down. You only have one channel, so you really don't have to test one. And then the only thing we have to do now is we have to actually physically set our control horns because we never actually set them on, okay? So let's look at this for just a quick second. So we're supposed to go in the outside hole for both. The rudder is already hooked up and that is pretty far off. So that must have just like fallen into the hole. Oh no, it was already set. But we need to center it, okay? So to center it, you just turn this in or out. So I would say we have to turn that in a little bit and we're gonna need some needle nose pliers to hang on to the, the shaft so that it doesn't spin out. Hey, okay. So I'm gonna hold this shaft. I'm gonna turn this in a couple of turns. Oh, we gotta go quite a bit. Okay, so you see what we're doing? We're just eventually, it's gonna be lined up so it's straight. And then we'll try this. Okay, so just like that, that looks pretty straight and you're just going down that seam is a good way to look at it. And then the elevator, same thing. Now, if you have safe on, it's gonna be trying to self right the plane. You're not gonna be able to see from over there. So that needs to be about there. See, I'm just holding this where I want it. And then I can see I need to pull this in a little bit so that that hole lines up with that hole. Or this pin lines up with that top hole. So there's one, two, three, four, five. The reason I hold it here is otherwise it spins on the other end inside of the, the airplane. Okay, so we'll try that. We're, we're not gonna snap it yet. Now we can look at the control surface. Oh yeah, buddy, that's good. We got it, we got lucky. So then some, some of these are worse than others. So I'm gonna use the needle nose to do that because it kind of hurts to snap them sometimes depending on how thick they are. So now we haven't flown much, but we have used some battery on this. So it may be wise to uh, change battery. Let's look at this. Takeoff flaps, landing flaps. The elevator does go the correct direction. It goes up, it goes down. We roll left, we roll right, we yaw left, we yaw right. We look at the steerable nose gear, everything is working. So we're ready to fly. So throttle hold is on or throttle cut is on. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch packs and come right back. <laughs> 